with John Davidson, I'm Mike Emmerich. This is what we dreamed of when we first heard there'd be a World Cup of Hockey, that it would go to a third game in the U.S. against Canada. The best run that a United States team has had since the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid in 1980. And USA coach Ron Wilson said this morning, this is the most important game a group of professional hockey players from the United States have ever had to play. You know, Mike, somewhere around Boston right now, Mike Ruzioni, who scored that game winner to beat the Russians in 80, got to have a big smile on his face. In fact, he sent a telegram wishing his club the Team USA, a lot of luck in this one. For Team Canada, hockey is the one sport that unites this country. This country at times needs some unification, and hockey does it for them. In 1972, they beat Russia, or the Soviet Union, in Moscow on a goal by Paul Henderson. It's been thought of ever since as one of the biggest sporting moments ever in this country. But now saying this game tonight is the biggest game in this country, for this country, since 1972. That sort of sets the stage, doesn't it? Does it ever. We picked six guys to watch tonight. We could actually fit 20, really, including the backup goaltenders. <laughs> but we're going with the most important forwards, defensemen, and of course the goaltenders in this game. Leclerc, Chelios, Richter for the U.S., Messier, Stevens, and Joseph for Canada. Mark Messier's back. Team Canada players and the country of Canada happy. We've all talked about it. He has the reputation of being one of the greatest leaders in the history of team sports. He'll be looked upon to provide that leadership again. And for Team USA, John LeClaire has been unstoppable, Mike. This is a player that is leading the tournament in scoring. Canada structured their practice yesterday to try and find a way to stop John LeClaire because he's so big. When he gets to the front of the net, like you see here, and he's not touched, he can't be moved. He has great hands, a little deflection, and he scores goals. So yesterday, the Team Canada club worked at trying to find a way to stop him from getting to the net. Like a big line, a lineman of football blocking out a great big player like John LeClaire. Well, goalie Mike Richter for the U.S. has been huge in this series, too. Will he face anything different from Canada? He is such a great athlete that Canada is trying to put people in front of the goal to block his view, to bump him a little bit, to, to find rebounds. Again, Canada in their practice yesterday worked at sending two forwards to the front of the goal because of the respect that they have for Mike Richter. This should be a good one, and Richter and LeClaire and Messier and Cujo, we've got some great ones. Two teams who've been together for just 32 days, but memorable days. Both with one hand on the World Cup. That changes tonight. Or maybe it'll take till tomorrow morning. We'll see. Far from that St. Lawrence River, here at the Molson Center, up on the eighth floor, we swing down to the first. The first floor and Jim Fox. Thanks very much, Mike. Having talked to both coaching staffs before this game, they both point in the physical aspects of the game to a strong forecheck. For Team Canada, they're very concerned. The first two men in, they have to put pressure on the U.S. defense, but at the same time, they can't get caught deep by one pass, and therefore the forecheck break down. Now, the American team, they're pointing to two guys, Keith Kachuk and Billy Guerin, especially early in the game, to get deep, get hits, and force mistakes out of the Canadian defense. From the mental standpoint, it's total difference. Well, in the last game, Canada felt they got too pumped up. Perhaps they felt they wanted it too much. Guys tried to play like individuals. They got away from the team game. The American team, they don't mind this road game, so to speak, because they feel they don't have to put on a show for anyone. They can play hard, they can get the hits, they get the tempo up, they skate hard all night, and by the end of the game, they feel they can wear down Canada. Thanks, Jim. You saw Team USA leaving for the ice right behind him. Canada is there. There are many banners for Canada and a few for Team USA. We'll be back with the start of the game in a moment. They can seat 21,500 here in Montreal. This will likely be the largest crowd tonight to ever watch an international hockey game. The one on Thursday set the new record. They expect more here tonight. The fans are standing to salute these two nations with their anthems. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the free. Et maintenant pour l'interprétation de l'hymne canadien pour les Canadian National Anthem, M. André Ouellet. Joseph has been great. He stopped 95 of his last 102 shots. He's 11 out of 11 in overtime. And Mike Richter, whose home is Flowertown, Pennsylvania, he went to the University of Wisconsin for a couple of seasons. He plays for the New York Rangers. He's undefeated in this building. A perfect 4-0 in the four games in which he's, he has played in this new Montreal building. Terry Gregson, 42, from Erin, Ontario. Gord Brossaker and Ray Scapanello, the linesman. In the Canadian locker room, just before game time, that is Robert Esme, who ran the first leg of the 4x100 for Canada in the Olympics. There he is handing the baton to Wayne Gretzky, a pump-up job for Wayne, for Wayne and Team Canada before the game. For Team USA, they got a telegram today from Michael Ruzioni in Redden Park. I know what it feels like to be where you are. It's a special moment, so capture it. Here we go. Scott Stevens lays it back in. He starts the game along with Eric Desjardins, Sackick, Lindros, and Shanahan up front. Team USA has Adam Detmarsh, who brings it on. LaFontaine breaking, but it's one away. The other forward, Joel Otto, Chelios, and Suter start out on defense. Joe Sackick bringing it on for Canada. Sackick a shot, and it's slithered wide. Rebound right out in front, and the net dislodged behind Richter. Well, John, what about the keys tonight for Team USA? Mentally, Mike, they have to believe in themselves. They have to be strong. It's another barrier for them psychologically, and the coaching staff said they would know early. Canada had a great third period in Game 2 because of their fourth checking. Team USA could not allow that to happen like it did in the third period of Game 2 and keep the crease clear. Canada practiced yesterday sending forwards on every single drill to the net, to the net, to the net to try and find a way to beat Mike Richter. And that'll be the job for Chris Jelios to knock people away from Mike Richter's goal free. Team USA is the home team tonight. They get the last change. Canada did not make a change, but Team USA has made at least uh, a couple. They wanted to get, they've been able to get Gary Suter back off. They wanted Darian Hatcher out there to work against both Lindros and Shanahan, and they've gotten that. Hatcher and Brian Leach have been a pair against them. Hatcher as big as the other Canadian forwards, and Leach, he doesn't get hit much, he's too smart. No change in the U.S. forwards. 
Bouncing puck to Joel Otto. Turned around by Eric Lindros, but the puck came to Leach. Then ricocheted off of Brendan Shanahan. Lindros lost. Shuttled back out again by Deadmarsh. And the first change in forwards for Team USA. No icing on this play. Scott Stevens takes over. Stevens banked one ahead that skipped through Adam Graves and is taken by Brian Leach. The captain of the U.S. team. Leach connecting on to Scott Young from Clinton, Massachusetts. Bounces one in that ricocheted off of Lyle Odeline. Odeline tied up on the boards. Claude Lemieux comes by, hoping to pick it free. Claude Lemieux's on the ice because Brett Hull's on the ice. That'll be a matchup I think we'll see throughout the game. 22 red for Canada against 15 white for Team USA. What about the keys tonight for Canada, John? Mike, their coaching staff felt in the third period, with which they played so well, yet lost game two. They played the game simple. North-south, not east-west. Get the puck deep and on try and forecheck as much as possible. They have been select in their second period. They'll score 11-5 overall in the tournament and 4-1 in this final series by Team USA in those second periods. And I don't know, can they stop LeClaire? John LeClaire's been awesome. It'll be a big test for Team USA and John LeClaire to continue and for Team Canada to try and stop him. Scott Young and Doug Waite and Brett Hull, the forwards. Matthew Schneider working on defense with Kevin Hatcher. It is Niedermeyer for Canada, wrapping it on around to be taken by Lemieux, moving out with Marc Messier. Messier just threw it back in deep and it curled on around. Knocked out of the play was Scott Young and the puck escaped back near Lyle Odeline. The last games he played here in Montreal, where as a member of the Canadians, he was traded for Stefan Riche to the New Jersey Devils. Niedermeyer pitched that one back in. Around it swirls. Keith Kachuk took a little lumber from Claude Lemieux. Centering pass skipped all the way to neutral ice, and Paul Coffey fresh from the bench to get it there. Two minutes have been played. We're looking for our first shot. Tom Foos tapped it in. Kevin Hatcher goes to get it. Did you expect a careful start to this game, John? Yeah, but every single time there's a loose puck, there's a battle. Every face-off is a battle. There's, there's a lot of determination with both clubs here early, Mike. A lot of determination. Puck turned back out near, near Bill Guerin. Ram all oh, coffee and sent him down to the ice hard. Meanwhile, it's played by Team USA again, and it's Guerin flipping one over. Missed for Keith Pachuk, but he's able to bat it back in. Curtis Joseph steers it quickly back around the boards. Good hit on Dom Foos by Guerin, and the puck went all the way back to Chelios. Chris Chelios pulled away from one, laid a pass that was cut off. Theo Fleury stepping back in. Fleury, menaced by Suter, put it on goal. There'll be a penalty coming up. It'll be against Team USA. And the first power play goes to Canada. The Chelios pass did not work. Canada was making a change. Fleury got onto the ice, intercepted the pass. So what you have is a neutral zone turnover, and that leads to a team that all of a sudden gets into trouble, which they did. Chelios, it looks like, will be the player going to the box. It's an interference call. Terry Gregson hands out the first penalty. Again, neutral zone turnovers create problems. Coffee injured, it looks like, down the left arm. Boy, did he ever get thumped to the oh, boards in Garin. glass. Yeah, right here. Bill Guerin, they wanted him to make sure he finished checks. Look at that. That's an accordion job on Paul Coffey, who was sideways into the boards, facing up ice. His body was at an angle to the boards, and he got accordion. So he's hurting. You see the grimace on his face right there as he looks now to get to the bench. So again, Chelios with a turnover. Flurry with a good intercept leads... Canada to their first power play and they have scored three power play goals in this final series in all the competition that goes back through the previous 18 games nobody has had a power play even close to Canada's in success it's 31 percent they are three for eight in the series puck lobbed along the boards and even able to get it by Joel Otto in the attempt to feed the point. And so dropping back will be Niedermeyer. They've got Eric Lindros back on the left point. Now. Three minutes in, there hasn't been a shot on goal registered. Coffey is now going to the left, to the uh, locker room, and his left arm is being cradled, so that does not look good for him. Doesn't look good for Team Canada, nor for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, that, that'll really affect this game if he's gone, in particular, the power play and the breakout passes for Team Canada. Sackick bringing it on. Pass went off the skate of Scott Young. Niedermeyer drops back. One lone shot up on the board. It is for Canada. Moving back ahead with it now is Leach creeping in. Fake one across and it was through LaFontaine. Now 
here comes Lindros, laying it across for Sackick. Hurried it on, but trouble there on the pass from Shanahan, an offside call, and we get a stop. And I will apologize. There was one shot on goal. That by Theo Fleury at the time of the Chelios penalty. So the first unit for Canada struggles here on the power play. 53 seconds of it gone now. There's Brian Leach, the captain for Team USA, being very careful and then trying to set up the cross-ice pass to Pat LaFontaine. They had a great chance there. Didn't quite work. They scored two shorthanded goals in the tournament, one by LaFontaine and one by Brett Hull. LaFontaine was close there to getting a second. Ryan Leach sitting at the bench, waiting now. The penalty killers out for Team USA include Joel Otto and Adam Deadmarsh up front. Kevin Hatcher working in back, along with Gary Suter. Niedermeyer with a little tap on back that's set up by Sackick for the carry by Mark Messier. Messier off Sackick, but to Niedermeyer and back in. Mike Richter flips it around the other way. Theo Fleury got there, but Deadmarsh came up with it. Now still a battle, and Deadmarsh able to get it back out. 47 left on the kill. Quickly back in near Gary Suter. Suter able to pump it along, but Sackett kept it. Oh, Sackett winds up, doesn't shoot. Great shot, knocked down in front, another shot, another shot. And Richter was able to get both of them. Thrown back off and out, and Mike Richter all in the goal for Team uh, USA. Two huge rebound saves there. Dead Marsh of Team USA told me when he penalty kills, he wants to stop Team Canada from getting point shots. Oh, trouble there. Leach tried to work it out. It's dumped right back in behind. Held there by Rod Brindamore. Fed one in front that went off Dom Foose. Team USA shifts from defense to offense. Ten left on their kill. Red Hall turning in. Lobbed one to the front. Desjardins takes that. And it is Chelios to get out of the penalty box. Right now, the teams are back at full strength. One shot on that power play for Team Canada. Yeah, Mike, I think they got two. They don't register it on the board, but I think Richter made two splendid rebound saves on that original shot by Sackett. It is Stevens laying it back across for Desjardins. Off of Brindamore. Tony Amonti moving back in. Little pass came to Brindamore and then Desjardins. Glad you've joined us tonight from Olsen Center in Montreal. Game three, best of three, the World Cup final. Pivoting with it is Matthew Schneider. Native of New York, New York. Born there and raised in New Jersey. Wrapped this one back in. It came over to Tony Amati. Ram hard to the board by Stevens. Thundering check. Centering pass came on to Graves. Graves steers on for Claude Lemieux. And Lemieux with a big blast that blocked the side by Richter. So, Smolinski in neutral light. To Schneider, who tried to pump it off. Now, here you have Odeline, who's only played one game. Now moving to left defense. He's a right-handed shot. He's playing left D in place of Paul Coffey. So for Team USA, that's something their coaches will tell their players. Feed on it. Go after it. It is Gretzky in front, and Dom Foos had trouble. On him uh, defensively was Tony Amonti. The puck tipped back out again, and Gretzky just flips it once more back in. Kevin Hatcher pursued by Gretzky. They cancel. Schneider wraps it around. Still some tangling back behind the net. Now worked out by Smolinski and dropped in for a U.S. shift change. 13.37 to go. First period, no score. Shots 3-0 Canada. Eric Lindros banked it. Red by Suter. Dropped back in. Good thump on him by Lindros. Rubbed down by Guerin, but poked away by Foot. Centered around for the pivoting of Keith Kachuk, who threw it in front, but Foot one-handedly blocked it away. Dumped along and Bill Guerin behind. Rammed to the boards and glass by Foot. Guerin again. Oh, and a heavy collision of players. Desjardins and Kachuk. Dumped around once more. Desjardins behind. Knocked it away from Guerin. Up the wing for Lindros. Lost to Suter in the dump back in. Are these teams finishing their check? Oh, oh boy. They are really finishing their checks. Notice Team USA has resorted to the dump in quite a bit, John. They feel that throughout the tournament, every time they played Canada, that their goals come off of dumping the puck deep and going and retrieving and work Canada's defense. A hull breakaway goal and a power play goal have not been a result of that type of play. All their other goals, the coaching staff say, have been. So their, their game plan is dump it and go get it and bang and create turnovers. This time, it's Canada dumping in. Graves did that. Richter tipped it away. Graves there to get it again. They don't need to plot the mule. He bumped Richter. Silly, silly. Power play to the U.S. when we come back. 
Mike Richter has the puck on the dump in, and Lemieux, you can't touch the goaltender. The rule reads, they are not fair game. You can't make any contact whatsoever. He did, certainly. Terry Gregson made the call. So USA gets their first power play in the finals. They're one for seven, a John LeClair goal. You had mentioned earlier the strategy on LeClair. Showed an example of it. See how Canada handles that, trying to keep the big man from getting to the front of the net. Get a stoppage of play on an offside with 12.08 to go in the third. There we go. Graves and Kachuk pushing and shoving at one another. Two power forwards. As this happens to be happening after the whistle. The Team USA has not registered a shot yet. We're almost eight minutes in, and a power play can establish some offense for your hockey club. And you can see that's the man that Team USA is looking to, Brett Hull, with his marvelous hands around the goal crease. Wait and Kachuk are the other two forwards. Kevin Hatcher will be one man at the point, and the other will be Brian Leach. Kevin Hatcher out of Detroit, Michigan, rolling this one back around. Set up by Joseph, taken by Stevens, chopped that by Kachuk. It is Messier. Messier able to get it back out of trouble to Stevens. Fires it around the boards. Hatcher can't stop that, and it's down. Well, you see the fast glass here. This is a building that does not have partitions. Just little things at the top of the glass holding them together. So when you fire the puck around the goal, or pardon me, around the glass, it really flies. Here's Hall moving in, and a shot is saved by Joseph. The very first shot for Team USA, and it's the guy they would pick to take it. Red Hall stopped by Joseph. Power play time is half over. Dump back around for a little pass over to Leach. Leach stepping by one and played it further. Jam back in by John LeClaire, but stopped by Joseph for Odeline. Wrapped it around, and Leach able to stop it a little. Guided it on, but it's Dom Foos walking it up for Canada and turning it back in. Chris Chelios taking over in the final 37 of his team's power play. At LaFontaine moving on. Trying to step by Niedermeyer, but instead it's banked back to Chelios. Chelios holding. Shoots one in front, and it went wide past a log jam of players. Suter shot. Ricochet back out. Chelios hustling to get there ahead of Brindamore. Brindamore able to hand across to Niedermeyer. Scott Niedermeyer with wrist shot out of the glove of Richter, and he has to cover. Baby, what a collision there. Brindamore went to the net. John LeClaire took care of Brindamore. Man, that was about a... But an eight on the Richter scale, and it's not the Mike Richter scale either. That's the real Richter scale. Man, what a collision that was. Here's John LeClaire cruising back. Now, this is in the offensive zone, and you see Odeline broke his stick right in half. in cross-checking LeClaire. He broke it right up near his hands, between his hands, and he had to throw his stick down. And there's LeClaire looking up on the big board here, watching the replay of his body check on Rod Brindamore. It was a beauty. LeClair said it's kind of strange. He's not nervous for these games. He games. thought he would be. Look at this hit. Boom. Oh, goodness. That's how you clear people right away from the net. Not controlled back to the point. But now worked along by Team USA, though not out. Led along by Linden, but it is Chris Chelio. Three to go on the penalty to Claude Lemieux. And so the first kill for Canada has gone well. Young's pass ricocheted back out. Linden couldn't reach. Lemieux could, but left it behind. Trevor Linden lost. Ryan Smolinski dipping back further. Then on to Tony Amonti. Amonti flipped one ahead, went across two lines, and so a stoppage of play. Almost halfway through this first period, it has been tense. Four shots for Canada, one for the U.S., and none in. Period away, New Dodge Intermission Report. Brad Hull will join Jim Fox, feature on the highlights of this wonderful tournament, tonight's highlights, and more. The only goal Team USA has had, it was an accurate shot by Brett Hull that Curtis Joseph made the save on. That was on the USA power play. From the glass to Leach's stick. But then Gretzky jabbed it around. It is Linden sending one in front, and the shot knocked him off the defense and a scramble, and Richter has it. Oh, it was from Linden to Dom Foos, but Richter wound up with it. I think it was a real smart dump in by Team Canada. The puck was elevated like a punt in football, elevated way up in the air. And that makes it tough for the defense. Watch Scott Stevens. Look at the elevation. Now a D goes back to get it, and he has to wait for the puck. And then Linden takes the body. The, all the bodies are there, and there's a shot by Dom Foos, and Richter reacted to a bouncing puck and made a good save. Those are the type of dump ins 
that coaches talk to their players about. Cross corner, elevated, and it gives the forwards an extra step or two to get in there and take the body, which Team Canada did. From the tie-up, it is Team USA emerging. Brian Leach able to bring it ahead. That one pass to Monty, stopped by Joseph. Joseph whips it with a big goal stick on around, hung up in the skates of Dead Marsh. Monty to the back, Leach moves in. Leach sent one in front, off six. Leclerc has it, turnaround shot blocked by Joseph. He covers, and play is stopped, there'll be a penalty. Oh, baby, how tough is Leclerc around the net? How, how do you, when you see this, Team Canada knows it, they're trying to work him over. There will be, or there should be, at least one penalty, and that's to Team Canada. Terry Gregson had his arm up before all the pushing and shoving. Nice play by Leach to get the puck to the goal and, and Curtis Joseph with the save. Let's check in with Jim Fox. Thanks very much, Mike. Yeah, interesting. You guys were talking about passing the torch the way it was passed in Canada's dressing room before the game. Well, there's pressure on some guys in this tournament. In a Montreal paper talking about Eric Lindros the other day, they said he's dropped the torch. They're very disappointed in his offensive production when you compare it to players like Gretzky and Mario Lemieux over past Canada Cups. And with Lindros, I don't know if that's fair to him, guys. I don't know if he's the same type of style as a Gretzky or Lemieux. And there's one thing for sure, when you talk to opposition head coaches before the game, they say one thing you have to do is stop Eric Lindros. He has the first goal of game one. He has two assists. He has more points than uh, those two players do. He can play on my team anytime he Darn wants. Right. I'll tell you that. He's a power forward. He does not have the finesse that Gretzky and Lemieux have, but that's the way it is. There, Dom Foos takes the penalty. And that gives Team USA their second power play in this first period. Holding at 10.29 of the period. Puck sent back to the point. It's Leach with it there. Over to Kevin Hatcher. Big drive is angled by Waite. Hung up in Scott Stevens. He cleared but not out. Kevin Hatcher fires. Knocked loose in front off Waite's stick. Picked up by Messier. And he cleared. Good work by Desjardins in front. As Team USA had time for with their defensemen taking the shots. But could not get the shots through to Curtis Joseph. Kevin Hatcher ahead, blasts the heart around, it swirls all the way back to the point for Leach. Leach shoots one, deflected off Joseph, loose puck behind, Hull trying to get there, then along to Kachuk, pointed back to Kevin Hatcher. Hatcher threw it through Kachuk, around behind, Doug Waite turning with it there. Waite just looks to the front, gave it to Leach, Leach across, big drive by Hull, he scores! Brett Hull, one nothing, a power play goal! You wonder how a person could be so accurate with a slap shot when you haven't stopped the pass, you haven't stopped the puck, and you're at the bad angle. Brett Hull's a right-handed shot, normally a, a right winger. Here he is on the left side of the ice. His stick is facing the passer. He's facing the passer, and he can step into the shot right here. Rockets the shot right over the shoulder of Curtis Joseph. one nothing. Team USA on the power play. They got the power play because they dumped the puck into the zone and forced Canada to try and hold bodies out of the way. That's how Dom Foos took his penalty. Brett Hall gets the big one here. What a tournament the St. Louis Blues had. What a tournament. Hall, sixth goal of the tournament, the second of the series, and his third of the tournament on the power play. It comes at 11-18. Team USA has scored the first goal on four previous occasions and has won all four of those games. Play stop here in Montreal. Red Hall with the only goal. This year, Dallas Stars season tickets are really going to fly. Because this year, you get a free round-trip ticket on American Airlines or American Eagle with every full season ticket you buy. Anywhere they fly in the continent. Call from Leach and Wait at 11:18. The shots 5-3, Team Canada. 8:29 to go in the first period. A Fontaine and Rod Brindamore on the faceoff. Grace Caffanello drops it, and it's Otto feeding on back. Suter to Chelio, and it's lobbed back in. Niedermeyer back after it. Otto wedged out. Dumped back around for control by Theo Fleury. Weak toss, but Odeline gives it back to him. Flurry with the blast. Richter the stop. And the cover. And he ducked out of the way as Niedermeyer came by his head. And a little extra. But Canada really wants to get it going in the offensive zone here. So they're trying to be very, very feisty. And Team USA battles right back. USA continues to dump the puck in if they can. 
Here's the dump in by Team Canada. And you see Niedermeyer, the defenseman, trying to jump in on the play. Now, Keith Kachuk, look at 17 white. He's the one that made Curtis Joseph lose the puck for a moment by standing in front, blocking the view. And finally, when Joseph got around, by that time, Brett Hall had rifled the shot. Top corner. Brett Hall will be on a flight early in the morning to Duluth, Minnesota. To rest for a few days before going back to St. Louis for their training camp. Ron Wilson will be on a flight tomorrow morning with his general manager in Anaheim, Jack Ferreira, and Chris Kincaid, one of the equipment guys, because they have a game tomorrow night, the first preseason game. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim will be at home against the Kings. They got to go to work. Their flight sometime around 9 a.m. Lucky the time change is with them. How about uh, Florida, the Panthers? They're training in Summerside, Prince Edward Island, the east coast of Canada. Puck back to foot for a shot, and it flew wide. Taken, though, by Iserman. Iserman dropped it back off. Rod Brindamore steps to that one. Brindamore moving around in front, and a shot went off someone, and then it's trapped in the scramble by Richter. Now this line may spark. Kachuk dropped his gloves, took a punch at Adam Foote, who had lost his helmet. And only one linesman over there to help break those two big guys up. This is getting real serious. Mike Richter showing good balance. Kept his angle. He has massive thighs. And look at this. This is what he does prior to every practice and every game. He'll go two or three hours before and he'll jog around the arenas and he has to loosen up those big thighs. So he does a lot of stretching to take care of them so he doesn't pull any muscles or, or tear any groins or whatever. Member of the 88 Olympic team, 91 Canada Cup, world team from the U.S., 86, 87, and 93. Plus a Stanley Cup in that bad in time in 94. I was amused at people saying that Team USA's goaltending would be questionable going into this tournament. Man, they got Jim Carrey, they got they got D.A. Bear, they've got Mike Richter, John Van Beesbrook is a goalie that couldn't play because of a shoulder operation. I was mentioning about Canada and hockey in, in the Prince Edward Island where the Florida Panthers are practicing having their training camp. Kids out of school, bust by the schools to be able to watch. That's how much it means to people in Canada. Puck lobbed on back. Niedermeyer angled it back off. It went off the linesman skate. Brian Leach plays that one, dumping it further. Niedermeyer rifled it right back in. Stopped behind by Richter. And Doug McLean is from Summerside PEI, and is probably, uh, if he's not mayor, he could be elected that. But he prefers to go with his three-year contract, a brand new one, for being with the Panthers as their coach. Angled back near Niedermeyer again. The teams are at full strength. 7.20 left in the first. Team USA ahead on a power play goal by Brett Hall. One to nothing. And a steal by Amante. Tony Amante forced Malinsky. Trouble on that one, though. And it's Sackick trying for Shanahan. Shanahan threw it back in wide. It'll be icing if Leach gets there. He does, so it is. See how smart he is? You see Leach bump Lindros just before Leach got the puck? That's how smart he is. Some people say, Eric Lindros is a horse. He should be able to demolish Brian Leach, but Brian Leach is so smart. He, he's a person smaller, yes, but he's able to, to be able to go with a bigger player. The puck is fired down by Shanahan. Look at Leach play Lindros. Now you bump him again right here. Bump and then get the puck. That's just smart heads up on Mike, you get this feeling. Both teams really trying to establish their board check. They're trying to find a way to retrieve the puck and create turnovers. Eric yesterday went uh, back to the hotel and watched Happy Gilmore. Movie. <laughs> what a goofy movie. <laughs> Try and stay loose. Guy who's been skating since he's been two. So that's 21 years of skating and playing hockey. Has lived with a lot of pressure. Has had some here in the province of Quebec when he didn't want to play for then the NHL team, the Nordiques. So he's used to that. I think his performance has been fine. Back on now comes Scott Young who pivots. Young tried to send it back in and did. Odeline there. And it's wrapped on around further, but Matthew Schneider to get it. Schneider playing it along now for Young. Scott Young taken out, spun along by Graves. Went through Richter's stick. Along comes Claude Lemieux. Turnaround shot. Jabbed at it through the crease wide from Graves. Helmetless is Scott Young. Brings it back ahead. They've got a four on three. Pass went off of Schneider. Hustling to it is Doug Waite. And Waite turned one around that came to Niedermeyer. 6.05 to go first period. Niedermeyer laid it back in. Stepping to this defensively, Matthew Schneider. Well, his white jerseys are they're like blockers in football. They're blocking the red jerseys from getting in deep. Canada has not established that fourth check like they did in the third period of game two. 
Adam Detmarsh trying to get through. Got it to Otto for a shot. Hit the goal post. Joel Otto ripped one off the right post. And a big hole went up from the crowd. Meanwhile, turning with it is Niedermeyer, laying it through the forechecking with LaFontaine to Adam Foote. Foote lobbed it off the glass. Turned around now for Dom Foos. Vincent Dom Foos for Team Canada, which trails 1-0 on a power play goal by Brett Hall. Puck lobbed out of play. Again, you had Canada dumping the puck. Team USA holding up those red jerseys. That allowed Team USA to get the puck, move out of the zone, and have instant offense. Instant offense led to a goal post hit by Joel Otto. You have to be smart defensively before you make it happen offensively. Look at the dump in. Now look at the the, white, the red jerseys can't get there. They're all being held up. Look at that. Now they can make a nice little play, get a little time, move the puck up the board. Now you can make a nice pass. Nobody's been hit. And all of a sudden there's offense. You battle through people and Joel Otto retrieves the puck, fires it off the goal post. You've got to be smart defensively first. Play back in. Niedermeyer with it there. Flings it back into the Team USA zone. Lobbed back near Scott Niedermeyer, who already has seen a lot of ice time. Part of that due to the injury to Paul Coffey. Yes, we are pursuing this, but we do not have an answer yet. Teams tend to be pretty careful about that sort of thing. It is tucked back out by Mike Madonna, but dropped back on by Lindros. So it's Bill Guerin back with five minutes to play in the first. Aaron's pass is spirited on to Mike Madonna, who moves back up with Kachuk. They crisscross, and it's Madonna trying to step by Lyle Odeline. Nice denial by Odeline, and then Garen. Bill Garen walks to the front, tried for Kachuk, but it's blocked by Niedermeyer. And Shanahan starts it back for Team Canada. Brendan Shanahan just lobs it back in, wants to get to it. Out of his net is Richter, flipped it along, and Keith Kachuk avoids the trip attempt of... Shanahan that time and angled it back down. Well, we haven't seen the pace in this game that we have seen in the previous two. Both teams trying to be smart defensively. Canada without Paul Coffey since the six minute mark of the first period. Will their defense tire because of it? Darian Hatcher. But then Stevens right on goal and a safe rebound. Eiserman on oh, a remarkable save made on Eiserman by Richter to the point. Desjardins a shot and ricochet dropped away by Richter. Oh my back now to Eiserman. Eiserman couldn't hold. Desjardins could. Flip one that skipped near John LeClaire. They control and try to play it back. Rindemore wanted to reach the point, but it was blocked. Team Canada drops back. Hopes for another chance. Team USA still at three shots on goal. Canada at eight. And those were the best ones. Mike Richter, spectacular. But again, it's the flurry Brindamore eiserman line. It's been their best line here in the first period. They've had two great skips for Canada. They did everything but beat Richter. Richter spectacular. And here now, the fans responding to that Canadian line. Team this home day on... Downstairs, Jim Fox. Thanks, Mike and Jenny. Just an update on Paul Coffey. There's no doubt he is injured. He's in pain. Maybe the shoulder, maybe the wrist. We look at action here, but certainly Paul Coffey is not at 100%, although he is back on the Canada's bench. That was just a replay of some of the last action that Steve Eiserman was involved in. You see him there at the bench. Paul Coffey in pain. We have no diagnosis yet, and that may take a while. Yeah, the last two shifts, again, by the eiserman brindamore flurry line, they spent the, the majority of the time on their shifts in Team USA's zone. The only line to do so for Team Canada. What rolled it around. Mark Messier behind. Messier trying to outdance weight. Rolled it back along further. Claude Lemieux got there. Tries for Messier again. They burrow in behind. Adam Graves helped it to Messier. Spun one in front. Knocked away by Richter. Backhander. And another stop by the skate of Richter as Adam Graves reached out and just didn't get enough on it. And it was awfully hard for Claude Lemieux to find a way to fire the puck when he had a stick held by a couple of white jerseys. I think Matthew Schneider in particular. The, the forecheck for Canada now starting to become impressive. The last two shifts, the FCA Graves Lemieux line keep it going after the Eisenman line got, got something happening. However, Mike Richter, again, he's such a great athlete. He can fight through traffic to make plays. There's a forecheck puck to the front. Graves is there. Look at the other side. Hull and Schneider grabbing a hold of Claude Lemieux's stick. He had no chance to finding a rebound. Richter. Oh, baby, look at that. That caught the skate of Matthew Schneider. It may have gone wide. It may have gone in. I don't know. That was awfully close. But Canada now establishing for the first time genuine forechecking. Joel Otto and Steve Eiserman for the faceoff. Yeah, see who Canada comes right back with? They had this line on the ice. 
Then they came with Messier's line. Now they come right back with Eiserman, Fleury, and Brindamore. The coaches know it's a one-time shot, so they're going with the players who are playing the best. It is Suter. Then Joel Otto. Out of Elk River, Minnesota. Lobs it back out. Scott Stevens goes to get it. Stevens pass tipped by Iserman, rolled back by Otto. Pat LaFontaine spun it further, and Deadmarsh put it back in, jostled a bit with Stevens. You watch as Odeline plays. Just under three minutes to go, first period. Team USA ahead 1 0 on a power play goal by Brett Hall. Jim Fox's guest in the first intermission. Odeline dropping back further. No change in Team USA's alignment. The old flurry lobs it on, but instead it's Chelios. Putting it off of Brindamore, on with it is Iserman. Steve Iserman leaned on by Otto. Iserman taken off. Chelios turned it around, and it's thrown out by Detmar. Another change in lines for Team USA. Now, with that short rest for Brindamore, Iserman, and Flurry, they weren't quite as effective. Maybe they should have sat for a couple of shifts, then come back with more energy. Paul Coffey is back on the bench, as Jim Fox stated. He does not have his gloves on. He's in a lot of pain. I don't think you'll see him play unless he gets a lot better than what he's been. You see him flexing the left arm. I think he's there for moral support more than anything else. He's a real leader for their defensemen. And he's hoping, obviously, to get back. Well, Team USA slows the pace down on the last shift, stopping Canada's fourth check. We have 2.17 to go in the first period. Shots are 9-3 Canada. But the score, 1-0 on a power play goal by Brett Hull for Team USA. Big boys out for Canada, Shanahan and Lindros, along with Sackick, and that means Darian Hatcher is out there. And also, I, I like this, too. You've got Shanahan and Lindros playing the walls, the wings for Canada, but you've got Kachuk and Billy Garrett playing the wings, playing the boards for Team USA. These, these are four of the better power forwards in the entire National Hockey League. And when you get players like this going opposite one another, I mean, something big could happen regarding body checks. Leach shuttled it on. Kachuk banged it off, and it's Desjardins. Desjardins and Niedermeyer, the defense combination for Glenn Sather's Team Canada. Niedermeyer's pass escaped, but Sackick rustled it down. Joel Sackick starting ahead, trying to break through. Leach came over. Sackick is strong, and a save made by Richter. Joel Sackick, a remarkable break right through the defense. On now comes Madonna. Hurries one, and Joseph had to act quickly to block that one. The first U.S. shot for a long time. Now it's Leach stepping in at the circle. Leach moving in, and a shot deflected to the glass by Desjardins. Team USA warming to the task here. Kachuk dumping it along, pivoting with it, trying to get loose as Mike Madonna double teamed, but it trickled through. Kachuk went down. And it's a little pass rustled down by Shanahan and given on to Saki. Joe Sackick again, looking to make a play, tries the dump in, Richter the read, spun it to the glass. Sackick again, lobbed one along, but it hung up in the referee's skate, and then sent down was Lindros by Darian Hatcher. It's in deep to Shanahan, looks for a pass in front, and it's taken wide by Adam Foote. Shanahan couldn't center, Lindros bumping with Garen. Centering pass, knocked away by Leach, played back by Bill Garen. Hammered one that went off the referee's skates, kept alive by Canada. It is Shanahan. Off of Kachuk, worked back to Sackick, Rich shot, oh, and he went to the top corner and almost got it. It's foot again, dumping it around off the shoulder of Lindros. Lindros controlling, centered one. It's off Garen's stick and taken by Leach. And Team USA wants to ice but can't. Lindros keeps the pressure on. Shanahan stepping to it there. 30 to go in the period, and it's tipped back down by Leach. And Team USA can finally make a change. So Stevens back with 22 left in the period. Watched by LeClaire, Stevens banked it back up, and it is Smolinski. Smolinski creeping in, hit the outside of the goal. Smolinski around behind again. Got away from Dom Booth, back to the point. Schneider a shot, bad stop, made by Joseph. And then it's LeClaire in the final seven of the period. LeClaire fighting with Stevens behind the net. John LeClaire without a stick. It's centered in front, it flew by Amandi, and the horn will sound to end the period. Goaltending, hitting, one goal in the power play. Baby, we're seeing two teams give it their best shot. Look at the smile on his face. <laughs> he had the only goal. And he will join Jim Fox in just a moment. To play U.S. leads Canada 1-0. And joining me right now is the goal scorer from the first period, Brett Hall. Brett, I want to talk about the first period. Not necessarily your goal. It seemed to me, if possible, the most physical period played so far. 
I, it was, you know, and was, I think there's a lot of uh, about 40 nervous guys out there, and uh, they don't want to make mistakes. And the easiest way not to make a mistake is always finish your check and uh, four check hard take in the body. It's interesting. You use that word nervousness, pressure. We've talked about your smile before. Does that mean that Brett Hull does not feel pressure? You don't get nervous? Uh, scared to death out there and uh, very nervous. But I mean, uh, uh, people have ways of showing it, and uh, you know, I try to keep an outwardly uh, calm look on my face, and you know, that's important in the dressing room and on the bench when. When the guys look and see, well, there's a there's a guy who's calm and, and collected. I mean, uh, even though I'm paddling like the duck underwater, but uh, you know, it's a calming effect on everyone. Well, let's take a look at some of that paddling. You had a power play goal, the one timer, exactly where you want it. Yeah. They set you up perfectly. Yeah. Well, I started out in the slot, and uh, the puck came over to Brian Leach, and I slid over to the uh, the backside, and I got a a lot of wood on it, and uh, Keith Kachuk caused an interference in front. I don't think uh, Cujo ever saw it. They talked before the game or after game two, certainly the Team USA felt, okay, it's nice to play a road game type of situation because you don't have to put on a show for some guys. Do you feel that in the dressing room? Well, we talked about that before the game, and we, we thought that uh, the team that comes out here with the simplest game plan and executes that simple game plan is uh, going to be the most successful. And I, it looks to me like both teams had the same idea because there's a lot of dumping and chasing going on. When everything's going on like that, we're watching the game. Do you ever get a chance during the game to step back and say, hey, this is some pretty good hockey here? Oh, certainly. We uh, we know it uh, from the opening shift, from the opening uh, game of the tournament and exhibition against Canada. We knew it, it was going to be exciting, and uh, this game is no exception. We have to look ahead to the latter two periods in the game. What do you think in the second period? Well, there's no question it's going to be the same type of hockey, and I think the team that uh, uh, doesn't make the mistakes uh, in their own end and the team that gets the best goal time is going to win. Well, Brett, good luck to Westway. Thanks very much for stopping by. Brett Hall has joined us after one period of play. Team USA leads one to nothing. And coming up next on the New Dodge Intermission Report, we'll look back on some special moments from the World Cup of Hockey 96 right after these words. Stay ahead of Canada at the end of one by a score of one to nothing. Here are highlights with JD. It's a power play goal. There's Doug Wade on the puck across the leech with a fake. Now in front, Kachuk is standing there. Big shot by Brett Hull off the pass. Wonderfully accurate. His sixth goal of the tournament. Again, look at Curtis Joseph have to look around the bodies. Now Brett Hull's got the blast going inside the goal post. It was a power play goal with Dom Foos in the penalty box. That's the only goal of the first period. There's Richter getting some help from the foot, the left foot of Matthew Schneider, the defenseman before he could move across. Richter had a great period, stopped 10 shots. Here's one that got away a little bit, but he's been aggressive, he's been smart. Here he shovels the puck in. And John LeClaire took care of the Canadian forward. Mountain Dew statistics, John mentioned the 10 shots that Richter faced, scoring chances almost even. Be interested to know the faceoffs were almost even too. The scoreboard is not. Team USA with a lead over Canada by a count of one to nothing. Period two. Coming up right after this. In this game, 1-0 Team USA. Second period will get underway shortly, but right now downstairs, Jim Fox. Thanks, guys. I had a chance just to talk to Paul Holmgren. He was pretty happy with the first period from the physical standpoint. We mentioned the open. Kachuk and Garen had to get on the board with big hits, and that's exactly what happened. I asked him if the shots on goal concerned him. He said, no, not really, because there were good stretches in the first period, bad stretches. They want to get more on an even keel. Team Canada has had a tremendous history of first periods. They have scored nine goals and given up three. They've had good starts, but in this first period, they did not score. Well, you know, during this, the intermission, both teams had to be talking about the upcoming second period. Team USA has been strong in second periods. Team Canada has been the opposite. I mean, a major problem for them. And in this series, it's been a major problem. Look at Canada for and against. 11-5 on the negative side. Team USA 14-4 the other way, the positive side. In this series, through the first two games, USA 4, Canada 1 in those second periods. So this really is a, a very serious period to play for both clubs. The other thing in, in, in thinking about Team USA in that first period, their neutral zone play was good. We showed their people holding up the red jerseys. But when they got the puck, they didn't get the puck out of the zone. That cost them time in their own zone. If you can't make a pass, fire the puck out along the boards, fire out along the glass, because Canada's forechecking, and when it gets going, it's the strongest part of their game right now. Ron Wilson said this morning, this will be one of the best games ever played. Pretty good forecast, at least for the first 20 minutes. I wonder if Glenn Sather is going to go with Flurry, Brindamore, and Iserman a lot in this period. You, you try to go with your best players. He's also got players who have had a history of playing very well 
in big games like Messier and Gretzky and such. Now that line you talked about, Eisenman, Brindamore, and Fleury did have four shots combined. Fleury getting three of them. That was more than any other line by a mile for his club. They know that. It's interesting now, too, Mike, to watch Paul Coffey skate around. He's got his gloves on, flexing his arm a little bit, but he is skating as though he would like to play in this second period. There's Fleury. He had three shots more than any other player. Brett Hall had two for Team USA, one of them, of course, being the goal. Mark Messier said yesterday, you can have all the emotion in the world, but you must execute. Well, Team Canada and Team USA have both had a lot of emotion. Today. A lot of emotion. It's been fairly controlled. You have to like that. You think about the three penalties. Chelios for interference. Lemieux for interference on the goalie. And Don Foos for holding. We've seen hitting hard, but we've seen good, clean, hard hitting. Paul Coffey begins the period at the bench, but this time with his gloves on. The line that we were talking about starts for Canada. Rod Brindamore and Theo Fleury and Steve Eiserman. Fleury played it in. Richter couldn't stop. Eiserman battling with Joel Otto. Good. Hit from behind by Brindamore on Chelios. Still the battle on. Rolled around for Rod Brindamore behind. Suter crosses him off. Suter trying to reach and is able to prevail. Nudges it behind for Chelios. Good work by Gary Suter. Back to the point, though. It's Stevens flying one into the breadbasket of Richter. And so play stop. Turn to our men and fast back over all of the games played in this tournament. Canada has two losses to Team USA. The United States suffered a loss to Canada. Czech Republic 0-3, the major disappointment of the tournament. And there's no doubt in our minds, USA and Canada, the top two clubs, and here they are fighting it out for the championship. The flurry line on the ice, they got the shot from Scott Stevens, so they had a fairly strong shift. Now you see another Red Hall, Claude Lemieux matchup. Shot into skates, Graves a quick shot, and Richter with the answer with a pass. Now it's brought on by Scott Young, but that one intercepted by Lyle Odeline of Team Canada. Odeline trying to play it further, has to play it off Messier and give it across. Scott Niedermeyer. Steps ahead with it for Team Canada, tucks it to the corner, and it is Richter playing the role. Graves and Leach front the door. They'll be teammates tomorrow. Back to Leach. They won't have to play for a little while, that's a help. They'll be teammates in New York effectively tomorrow. Again, we should mention, every time Brett Hull's been on the ice at even strength, in his face has been number 22, Claude Lemieux. That's been a matchup that's been constant here. Peter Meyer to take this one for Canada's defense. Just pivots and looks over to Odeline. So we'll watch for the reappearance of Paul Coffey. Might not come. That's the case. Odeline will be able to shift back. Right. Turn back out now for Kachuk. Little lob on now to Doug Waite. Waite working it up the wing. And a shot by Bill Guerin. Floated wide. Brought back up ice now by Joe Sackey. Crowd starts to talk it up. Little pass on to Lindros. Got it over to Shanahan. Fanned on the shooting attempt. The coffee's on the ice. All Coffee is out there with Adam Foote. Madonna with a pass over to Kachuk. Then for Garen, brushed away by Coffee. Kachuk lobbing it along. Garen tied up with Coffee behind. Could not fight his way to the front. Foot battling with Madonna. Carried him off bodily, but Madonna able to flick it along for Bill Garen. Bill Garen's been going at it with Coffee again. Coffee, I don't think, has strength in his left arm. And that because of the first period hit of Bill Garen. This is sent down for an icing. And a stoppage of play with 17.42 to go in the second period. And Foot having words now with Garen and others. Foot is the defense partner of Paul Coffey, and he's a very good teammate. Watch Coffey here meet up with Garen. Coffey there takes a little cross check, and you can see the grimace. He goes back at Garen. Left arm out. Does he have strength? Some words with one another. Man, it's a battle. No penalties handed out. Garen with a big hit on Coffey in the first period, an accordion-type hit. Crushed Coffey into the boards, and Coffey had problems with his left shoulder and arm. Oh, look at that. I think this game means something. Wow. Ken Lowe tending momentarily to Coffey. Not much he can do right now, though. It's back to the point. Kevin Hatcher with it. Hatcher shoots one that went wide. Amonti tried to play it behind, but instead it's Scott Stevens. Stevens' pass is on to Trevor Linden. Starts it on further for Dom Foos, moving in with Gretzky. Got it to him. Gretzky fed it wide. Looked like he was trying to combine with Linden. Now John LeClaire moving back. 
Put it off the back of Amante. And it's retrieved by Kevin Hatcher. Six foot, four inch, 225 pound defenseman hands over to Schneider. Schneider lobbing one past the reach of Gretzky. Turning with it, Stevens. Through Dom Foos. On back to Hatcher again. Talked about matchups, Mike. Stevens has been on the ice when Leclerc is on the ice. Big number four for Canada against big number ten for USA. Another constant matchup. Muscle against muscle. Ryan Smolinski put that one in. It's sent back around on the turning stick of Trevor Lindis. Linden back for Gretzky. Gretzky dumps it back the other way. Dump and chase for both teams. Darian Hatcher gives it over to Leach. Leach looking for an opening. Brian Leach carries into the slot, trying to get through. And when he went down, he tucked the backhander wide, and the net dislodged. An old line look to the referee, thinking maybe a penalty. There is none. Brian Leach, coast to coast. Yeah! Skills of Brian Leach. Now, does he get tripped up? Yeah, a little bit by Scotty Niedemeyer. Odeline there. Oh, he was looking around to get away from a stick. Brian Leach tripped up at the last moment, showing the abilities that he has offensively. He's played great defense in this tournament, not so much offensive. The number one priority is defense. Darian Hatcher, big drive, and it went wide. The old flurry, rolling one along, brought on by Rod Brindamore, has Odeline breaking. Brindamore a shot, and Richter covered and then looked around, but he still has. There we go. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Iserman, Brindamore, along with Fleury, the number one line for Canada so far in this game. And again, they get themselves an opportunity. Odeline line there, the defenseman jumps in. Brindamore holds up. Now he'll use the screen of Brian Leach. And you can see Odeline, line, the defenseman was right there looking for a rebound. And Mike Richter, brilliant in the fact that he made the save through the screen and did not allow a rebound, even though Odeline line was right there. That line is back to Team USA up, and it's something that Team USA has to be aware of. Glenn Sather, he leaves that Canadian line on the ice. You think they'd look good in Nagano, Japan, in about a year and a half? Flurry is 28, Brindamore 26, Iserman 31, representing Canada. Well, there'll be a lot of guys from this tournament that will be in the same kind of uniform, maybe a little different design, but the same nations when we get there. Here is Lemieux, Lemieux having trouble, but a good wrist shot by Messier is saved by Richter. Then it was left in front, but was cleared away. And Canada changing on the fly here to get the matchup of Lemieux against Brett Hull. Wait, put one against the outside of the goal, and it is played by Niedermeyer. Shots in the period for Team USA, one, for Canada, five. Wayne Gretzky said we were too aggressive in the second period of game two, and that hurt us. Here comes Hall ahead, drops a pass on. Rolled back over for Doug Waite. Spun it around, hoping for Hall. Hall could not connect with Scott Young. Still sends one in front that went off a teammate's stick. Adam Graves punts it on to Lemieux in a two-on-two. -two. Claude Lemieux got it back to Graves, and a save made by Richter. Good shot by Adam Graves, and a nice move by Team Canada. You know, they're trading rushes here. Team USA not getting a shot on goal. Team Canada, yes, they're getting shots, but Richter's there. Foot, bounced one off the boards in the back of the goal. Kevin Hatcher pivots on defense. The big man nudged it back on for Mike Madonna. Madonna passes on to Bill Guerin. Guerin trying to step by, forced right off, and plastered to the boards and glass by foot. Now Madonna with a pass in front. Couldn't get it to Kachuk. Instead, it's Lindroth back up to Shanahan. There was a rush by USA again. No shot on goal. And All a penalty. Injury, yeah. Lindros was being held up by Kachuk, and I believe Lindros. We'll get a high sticking call in a 1-0 USA lead. The only goal for USA on the power play. Keith Kachuk is still down. That was on the far side of the ice. Lindros had made the defensive play in his own zone, intercepted the pass, and then headed up ice and tried to lead the rush. And it looks like Kachuk got clunked on the back of the head. It's a two-minute penalty that's up on the board right now. Lindros has intercepted the puck. Now he's being picked up by Keith Kachuk, who tries to hold him up, and there's the stick up high from Lindros, and it'll come down right there in the back of the head. That could very easily have been a double minor, a four-minute penalty. They showed the replay on the board here, and the fans were watching. A two-minute penalty is what Terry Gregson handed out with a stick up high like that, obviously catching underneath the helmet. That could have been at least a double minor. I think Lindros got away 
with what could have been a double minor, Mike. Oh, he sure did. Even when the crowd watched it here, you could sense yeah. the reaction. Uh, you, you know, don't yeah. try to read this too much in, but you could sense that. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of holdups. There's a lot of interference. You've got the fight through checks, but you can't use your stick like that in a game of this magnitude when you're nearing the midpoint of it. See, Kachuk is holding him up. That's interference, no doubt about it. But Lindros has to fight through it and not do that with a stick. You can't do that. I mean, you just you're asking for trouble. Both teams are holding each other up. There's not a lot of space. Both teams doing it a lot, but there, and you can see Kachuk with the ice pack to the back of the head. So, power play time for Team USA. Peter Demers, the Los Angeles Kings trainer for the last 25 years, tending to him. Leach goes back to get it. Hit by Brindamore, it's taken by Hatcher. Power play just getting underway for Team USA. Flips it on now for Pat LaFontaine. Hit hard by Stevens, it's drilled off by Desjardins. Leach able to play the bouncer fine. Back by Madonna, Kevin Hatcher with a shot, grabbed by Joseph, and he'll wait. Couple good. of good hits by Team Canada. Brindamore to the left side of Mike Richter on leech. And then Scott Stevens threw a good hit into Patty LaFontaine. You can see the pain on the back, from the back of the head, hit by Lindros in the face of Keith Kachuk. Well, that's one of the few places you're not protected. Oh, that's right. Canada makes a change, taking Brindamore off. Messier now on the ice for the defensive zone draw. The faceoffs have been relatively even in this game. Fontaine and Messier for the draw. Stevens, but Leclerc. Then to Madonna. Madonna threw it on back. Each able to glove and control there, but was just bodied enough by Adam Graves to neutralize. So the play breaks down with a minute 25 to go on the minor to Lindros. You sense how important this penalty kill is for Canada. They're being very tenacious with all loose pucks. And Team USA with a golden chance. They've only had seven shots, but they lead one nothing. Here's Leach moving in. Fed one just behind LaFontaine. And now it's Messier bringing it back for Canada. Pursued by Leclerc. Don Leclerc will go back. Team Canada will make a change. They bring out Brindamore and Steve Iserman to penalty kill. Cleared back down. Niedermeyer working on defense, along with Lyle Odelon. And it had to be forced away from Iserman. Leclerc dropped it behind. 50 seconds to go on the power play now. 1-0 Team USA on a power play goal by Brett Hall in the first period. And Brett Hall standing up on the bench. He wants to get on the ice. There's only 40 seconds to go, and he hasn't seen the power play. Fontaine to wait. They'll get by the bench now, so maybe they can accomplish it. Hall is back out, but here's Dom Cruz on a breakaway. Dom Cruz! Up from Dom Foos this time as he came down in a slashing motion. Brilliant move by Dom Foos. Brilliant move, but a better save by Mike Richter. My goodness. Everybody in the building thought that Dom Foos was going to score. He was around Richter, but Richter never gave up on the play. He got his arm across and the backside of his goal stick made the save. It brought the people out of their seats here in Montreal. My goodness, short-handed, tenacious penalty killing. Don Foos from the blue line in was all alone, and Mike Richter got it done. Look at that pass. Brian Leach was frozen. Now watch this goal stick, the backside of it. He never gave up on the play. What a save. Neither did Don Foos. He kept going. Had another shot right here. But this time, Richter wasn't sure. Look at Richter's head. He's looking around, looking around. Not sure. Here's Don Foos coming down with a stick on Brian Leach. It is Young putting it behind. Suter takes. Mike Richter, who grew up in the Philadelphia area, idolizing Bernie Perron of the Flyers. If Bernie's watching. He's probably very proud of that fact. Watching a great goaltender work tonight in an important game. Mike Richter used to sneak into the spectrum, Mike. I don't know how he did it, but he did it just to watch Bernie play. Here's Young controlling. But it's cut off by Gretzky, and they start a three-on-two. He's got Lindros right from the box with him. Chopped away by Suter. And then Chelios had it rushed to the corner by Richter. Thrown around behind. Wayne Gretzky with it there. On to Desjardins. Dumped the shot. And it's controlled by Amante. Seven and a half played in the second period. Still 1-0 Team USA. Canada with 18 shots. Team USA with seven. Curtis Joseph hasn't had much work. 
Not really a lot of quality work. And the pass over two lines from Gretzky to Dom Fusu. Dom Fusu almost tied this thing. Almost, but not. To Pathfinders, exotic Close game all the way. Ron Wilson, head coach of Team USA, had an interesting comment, a comparison the other day. He compared this battle to a heavyweight prize fight. But he also said Team USA is the contender. Team Canada is the champion. And from that standpoint, he feels Team USA has to go for the knockout. You can't try and outpoint Team Canada. Similar situation right about now. It looks like Team USA may be on the ropes, but they're still looking for that knockout. Well, they've been outshot 8-2 this period. Mike Richter's been brilliant. It's 18-7 over all the shots in favor of Canada. And we have Kachuk opposite Lindros on this ship. Well, well, well. Stick high from Shanahan on Leach. Puck popped up to Shanahan, rolls it back in. Lindros spiked it in deep. Taken out of the play by Darian Hatcher. Angled back. Foot kept it there, but it's cut off by Bill Guerin, who accelerates back out. Bill Guerin on for Team USA, couldn't throw it through Coffey. Now it's Kachuk following up, and he went oh up boy. high with Foot, and boy, did they have an exchange. Uh, Kachuk got the stick up into Foot's shoulder. Leach a shot, knocked down in the slot. Lindros able to steer back out. It's a three on two. Got it to Shanahan. Right back for Eric Lindros again. Sackick tries to poke it through. Sackick again, and it's turned aside by Richter. Now Lindros losing to Leach, a penalty coming up. It'll be on Team USA. Billy Guerin took down Shanahan. Guerin will get two minutes. Team Canada starting to really dictate a lot of things here. But Mike Richter, again, has been brilliant. We had Kachuk on this ship go at it with, with Adam Foote. He went at it with Lindros. Now, here's the penalty. You can see Guerin knocking down Shanahan. And he did, Shanahan did not have the bucket to hit from behind. Another look at Mike Richter and his brilliance. This is Don Booth fighting to find the puck. Richter moved out to cut the angle down, and the puck was trapped underneath his body. So, two minutes to Billy Guerin. There's 11.22 to go here in the second period. The shots are 19-7 in favor of Canada. And I think, as far as Canada and the United States go, this is a flow point of the game. Canada's better this second period than what they've showed in the prior two of this series, but they're not getting any results. The other thing, Mike, Paul Coffey's out for the power play. He will work one point. It'll be Joe Sackick on the other. Dom Foos and Lindros and Gretzky. Gretzky seems to be getting more ice time than we noticed in game two. But of course, this game is more essential to Canada than the second one was. Otto and Suter and Chelios among the killers. Sackick fed one in front. Dom Foos is shot and it's saved by Richter. Well, that didn't take long. Lindros on the draw. Sackick the pass. Dom Foos the shot. And what else is new? Richter another save. Well, referring back to Mark Messier, they've got the emotion and they have the execution. They just haven't scored past Richter. 20 shots to seven in favor of Canada. The Team USA ahead on Brett Hull. Power play goal in the first. Roll Otto battling there. Puck came back to Gretzky. Feeds it across to Coffey. All Coffey waiting. Gives on to Saki. Tucked it to the corner. Wrapped around now for Gretzky. Then back for Dom Foos. Dom Foos back to the point. Gets it again from Coffey. A minute 20 to go. Power play. In now to Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Center in front. Lindros. to make legends out of hockey players, and Richter is becoming a legend already. Lindros was in front, Gretzky was in his office behind the goal net, a brilliant backhand pass, a quick shot by Lindros, and watch again the flexibility, the read, the quickness of Richter. That's a catching glove save. Lindros had his arms going up in the air. He thought he scored. Gretzky on the backhand pass, it's a bullseye. Look at the flexibility, the left hand above the goal pad, and Richter, oh, not only makes the save, but he hangs on. Earlier, he made a save right off the faceoff to start the power play on Dom Booth. It is Gretzky with a minute 10 to go on the power play. Dom Booth laid it behind. Lindros can't get there because of Darian Hatcher. Coffee hit by Hatcher. Dom Booth with the puck. Dom Booth to Lindros. Gives it back. Coffee. Sackett. One time shot went off LaFontaine to the corner. Dom Foos behind to Lindros. 50 to go power play. Out in front. Lindros with a pass to Sackett. And it's shunted down by LaFontaine. Now Sackett again. Lindros couldn't tee it up. Battle back out. And here's LaFontaine turning. And Team USA now slows and moves back. Pass went away from Leach. They had an event, uh, a three on two, but 
but didn't have a lot of acceleration, and that wasn't their worry at the time anyway. Sackett gives it on a cross. Paul Coffey hits the line. Got it to Gretzky. Could not get a shot. Chelios with a slash right to the arm of Coffey. Chelios is going. There'll be a two-man advantage for 23 seconds. You could hear the whack on the arm by Chelios. He went right over the arm of Paul Coffey. Team USA is being outplayed, and if they want to hurt themselves with penalties to complicate the situation, that'll really hurt them. Victor can only do so much. There's been 28 shots on goal in this game, three-quarters of them by Team Canada. Mike Richter has been superb, but now Team USA putting themselves into trouble. Big-time trouble. A five-on-three for 23 seconds. Now what's going on here? Martin Brodeur coming off the bench. This may be to buy some rest for Team Canada for that power play unit led by Gretzky to get rest. Looks like he's going to go down and maybe replace Joseph for one for one shift. Yes, he is. And Coffee is having his hand checked right there in the hallway as he took the slash, and it was a it was a slash from Chris Jelios. And he's going again to be checked out. Coffee's left thumb, you can see they're checking it out. Chelios came down. I don't think Chelios wanted to hit the arm. Chelios is a smart player and maybe wanted to hit the stick, but it did come down right on the hand there. It's got to be a penalty. Yeah. So, Coffee now coming back to the bench. What will happen is, is if, if Glenn Sather needs some more time for a, for a rest for Gretzky or whomever he wants to get rested, Curtis Joseph to take his time to go back in the net to replace Brodeur to buy like a timeout without having to take a timeout. Brodeur has to stay on until the next stoppage of play at least. 23 seconds of five on three power play. It's back to Fleury. Then along for Brendan Shanahan. Shanahan trying to muscle it through Otto. Coming by Darian Hatcher, but it's back to the point again. Sackick has it there. Joe Sackick with 11 left on the first penalty. Niedermeyer on to Sackick, then to Gretzky. Gretzky fed one, Shanahan, no shot. Loose puck in front, still battled for. On it came back to Niedermeyer. Now to Sackick, Sackick to Gretzky. Save made by Richter, rebound! Tries to close his legs and he's able to. On the puck and the first penalty has expired. Oh, look at this. They're fighting for every inch, both teams. Richter brilliant. Team USA gets one man back. That's Bill Guerin. The defenseman is staying away from this scrum for Team Canada to make sure they keep the face off deep. That little guy, Theo Fleury, when he's battling like this, that's when he's at his best, and he may be getting a penalty, Mike. Looks as though the way Canada's protesting. Maybe a player for each team, the way Terry Gregson is pointing. He's got both hands going like, a, like an orchestra leader, pointing and pointing and pointing and pointing. So Fleury is in the box. Team USA has their door open, so it looks like Darian Hatcher will go. Look at this, Richter, read the play. Gretzky's there, there's a shot, there's another play where he had to find a loose puck, actually gets help, and the puck from Gary Suter shoveled underneath. And there you see the players in front, my goodness. 134, 1 minute 34 seconds to go on the Chelios penalty. Joseph back in now. It's actually Glenn Sather on both occasions didn't need to use that. <laughs> Marty Brodeur, he had his time. Great kid, isn't he? Yeah. Guy Hebert, by the way, is the backup goaltender for Team USA. We should mention in the moment we have Bill Ranford, Sylvain Cote, Ed Jovanovski, Pat Verbeek, Rob Blake, and Keith Primo are the scratches tonight, but the proud members of Team Canada. Jim Carrey, Bill Housley, Sean McEachern, Steve Connewal, Chuck Brian Ralston, and Sean Chambers, the scratches for Team USA. Of this power play for Team Canada, they've had four shots on goal. Richter has stopped them all. Coffey again is back on the ice. Terry Gregson getting busy. Roughing to Flurry and Hatcher at 10.42 of the period. A five on four power play continuing. A minute 34 to go in. Sackett, Coffey, Gretzky. Gretzky worked it in deep. Messier a shot that went off Richter. Joel Otto able to clear it back down. So Joseph handles and turns behind for Coffey. 118 to go power play. Flying ahead with it, Mark Messi. Messier, pardon me, then Gretzky. Wraps it in deep. Kevin Hatcher goes for that. Bumps with Lindros, and it's lobbed back out. Denmark's striding for it, but Coffee there first. So it is LaFontaine trying to work further. Spins. 
But it is brought back now by Messier and a four on two. Messier controlling, has Gretzky nearby, but just holds. Messier still with it. Sent one behind to Gretzky. He's waiting, he's looking to sack. He bounced one across the net mount. And here's a chance for Team USA shorthanded. Pat LaFontaine moving out with Denmark. LaFontaine cruises. Kevin Hatcher a shot. Oh, and getting a piece of that one was Joseph. 35 to go on the power play for Team Canada, which trails Team USA 1-0 midway second period. Joe Sackick has it there. His team has outshot Team USA 24-8 in the game. Tom Booth behind off Lindros' stick. Close quarters to Gretzky. Back for Lindros. The two go to the corner. Trouble there, but a kick back to Sackick. Sackick holding then for Dom Booth. Dom Booth just looks. Dealt one in for Gretzky again. Centered one in front. Shot! with eight to go on the kill. That is the sixth shot on goal on the power play for Canada. Hatcher for Team USA had one shot shorthanded. Now, I, Mike Richter, just keep going and going and going. And if you question his ability to keep it going, you're wrong. He's a well-conditioned athlete, and he will not tire in these situations. Lindros had trouble with a puck. Team USA broke up ice. And you can see Hatcher smartly through the screen of Sackett put the shot on goal and Curtis Joseph who's had to really keep his mindset strong made the save look at Gretzky behind the net here comes the defender quick shot and again Richter what's what's amazing me is all these shots on goal Richter is controlling rebounds I mean he's not letting rebounds get away from him at all So a big face-off between Smolinski and Iserman. Kevin Hatcher has gone to the locker room for Team USA. We don't know what the problem is. We'll try and find out. We don't know if it's equipment or help. Iserman on the draw. Puck flips over for Matthew Schneider. Wedged by Dom Foos. Dom Foos battles with Smolinski. Around behind Shanahan saw that one and took it. Shanahan tried for Iserman. Able to nudge behind. Penalty time is up. And it is controlled along by Schneider, then fed back out to neutralize. Delio's fresh from the box, now heads for the bench on a defensive change. Leach and Schneider, uh, Schneider the defense, as it's worked back over for Matthew Schneider, then back out. Little tap for LeClaire fails, muscled back by Stevens, rolled across for Leach. Off the skate of LeClaire, pitched right back in on goal, and one of the easier stops for Richter in this game. Claude Lemieux was there, but down. Fort Brendan Shanahan will be sitting alongside Jim Fox at the end of this period. A feature on some of the dramatic moments that we have seen. Tonight's highlights. A lot of goaltender highlights, I think, unless things change radically. A lot more for you in the intermission. Like it took until about 30 seconds ago for the linesman and referee to break up the two teams. They were pushing and shoving. Scott Stevens and Tony Amonti were having words. Claude Lemieux and Brian Leach were having words. And now you see Team Canada makes a late change. They had put two lines on the ice. Now take the Lindros line off to leave Messier on the ice. Again, Lemieux is out there with Messier and Graves, and their job is to try and score, yes, but also play defensive against Brett Hull. Leach trying to control. The puck kicked on to Hull, and Hull just angled it back out. Desjardins to play it there. Pass intercepted by Hull, who's in. Hull with a shot. Nice block by Stevens, and it's fed right back away. Graves connects on with Mark Messier. Messier stood up by Darian Hatcher. Puck taken by Lemieux. Lemieux fed one. Messier, oh, a scorching shot was saved by Richter, and Graves was standing right in front of it. Wait, put it back out, taken to the glass by Lemieux. Team Canada dumps it right back in. Been pretty successful for them, but they have not scored. Leach had it taken away by Gretzky. Gretzky hands over to Desjardins with a shot. Save Richter, and he's able to trap. Uh, Gretzky showing speed. This may be the best I've seen Claude Lemieux play in the tournament. He's making things happen, and Mike, Team USA, Mike Richter's getting it done, but their defense has been worked and worked and worked and worked. Their forwards not working. Not working at all. Look at Leach on the puck and Gretzky's speed. Gretzky just keeps right on going. Now Desjardins the defenseman, and again, Richter with a save and no rebound. He's been spectacular at not allowing any rebounds to get away from him. Game two, the third period, the whole thing was played in Mike Richter's zone. Here, we're nearing the completion of the second period with 6.29 to go. The play is all in Team USA's zone. Their defensemen have to be getting tired. Richter's getting pressed. Canada's fresh. 
Team USA's forwards have got to get their act going to take pressure off their defense or Canada will just keep feeding like they like they are. Well, outside of Richter, Team USA is on borrowed time. Puck fed out to Lindros and a shot floated wide off Suter. Tucked out in front. Lindros battling again. Still trying to come up with it. And it's back for Odeline to put back in on a delayed offside so Shanahan can't take. The delayed offside is whistled down. You mentioned the third period the other night. Canada outshot Team USA 18 to 7. And in this period, it is 17 to 3. And it's all because of their forecheck and their big forwards. Claude Lemieux there meeting up with Darian Hatcher. Darian Hatcher is the one big player who can do things like that. Adam Graves is a power forward. He's playing the wings. Now, we talked about Lemieux a moment ago. Look at this. That's what he does best. He's a power forward. There he took out Doug Waite. Uh, he has, to me anyway, not played at this level. Looks like a timeout may be called here by Team USA, and I don't blame Ron Wilson for this. Talk to Ron Wilson before the game, if it is USA's timeout. Canada's timeout. Word we have from down below is that Team Canada called it. It would make more sense, I think, at this time for Team USA. Right. Team USA would be happy with it. No, it's Team USA, we've been told now, Mike. And uh, Ron Wilson told me before the game, if he needs to use it somewhere, he, he and, and not the third period, he'd use it. But it certainly looks right there. It looks right there as though he's having a stern lecture for his club, and they need one. Because they are not going at all like Canada. Canada is flying. They're going on on the forecheck, board work, creating scoring chances. And when that happens, it opens up Gretzky's ice space. He can make it happen. Defense can jump into the play. And the shots are 27-8, but Canada has a score because of that guy right there. He's back to his goal crease. The face off about 60 feet, maybe a little more out from him. Madano to take the draw with Sackick. 6.14 to go in the second period. Keith Kachuk rolled it back in. Madano tried to get there, but it came to Niedermeyer. Spun it back for a little tip by Shanahan. Sackick pivots. Shanahan takes. Hands back onto Odeline. Trying to fight his way by and can't. Kellyos put it off the glass. It went back to Shanahan for a shot that was deflected just wide by Lindros. Lindros up with it out and front. It went through Shanahan to the point. Odeline fires and it went wide. A penalty coming up. It'll be against Team USA. Oh, no, maybe not. No, we got an interference call, and it was going to be against uh, one of the Team Canada players for interfering with Mike Richter. We saw a stick down. We saw Chelios without his stick, and I thought it was going to Team USA, but it's Shanahan for goaltender interference, I think, Mike. It'll be the second time this game that Richter has drawn a penalty. The first one to Claude Lemieux, and this time Shanahan there makes contact with Richter, and you see Terry Gregson's arm up. So, for the second time in the game, a power play to Team USA because Canada bumped their goaltender. And they Team USA Canada. needed this. Well, Team they Canada ever was get, rolling, man. To get some offense going at least. I think you think of the third period in game two, and, and this game so far, the shots are 45-15 combined in favor of Canada. But Mike Richter has been flat out spectacular. Shanahan does not like the call. It wasn't a big bang with the goalie, but he did brush Mike Richter, and Terry Gregson made the call. Well, here is a drive back down by Stevens, head high past referee Terry Gregson. Predominantly Canadian crowd here does not like the call either. On now it comes to LeClaire, angling back in. Hull drilled one into Joseph. And it is Messier. Messier trickled it on behind. Desjardins flies it around and leaps with a keep. Leach walking in. Got it out in front for Hall. And a shot saved by Joseph. And another try by Hall was held too. Oh, well, Curtis Joseph hasn't had a lot of work. But when it's come to him in the spurts, he's been splendid. And Brian Leach pinched on the near boards. Kept the puck alive. And then Hull was able to walk out. Joseph went down low. Took away the entire portion, the bottom portion of the net. And then Desjardins, who's played a lot more physical in this game, knocked Brett Hull down as Brett Hull was looking for a third rebound shot. See, there's Leach. He made the play happen, kept it alive. Now Hull can move in. Watch Desjardins get up, 37. Then he moves in and pushes Brett Hull down to the ice. That's, that's tough space in front of the goaltenders in this game. It has been mean space. See, Brian Leach, good, smart play to keep the play alive. You can do that when you're on the power play. Hull, one shot, two shot. Boy, the Leach gets taken down by Adam Graves. Tough space. You got a battle. Well, that's what Ron Wilson said about this series. It's straight up North American old time hockey. And it has been marvelous. We enjoy it. The ice packs get a workout. 
Even more after this game. Moving in now is Kevin Hatcher. Put it around behind. It is LeClaire brushing on to Hull. Back to the point to Leach. Across to Kevin Hatcher. Shoots one. Turned aside by Joseph. Moving forward is LeClaire. Inside the box is Smolinski. LeClaire trying to get it there. Dueled with Scott Stevens. Smolinski in to help out. But it's along to Sackick. And it is back out. Off the tip of the stick of Hatcher. Back they come halfway through the power play. And again, Canada forces Team USA to drop further. Well, there's one goalie you want in your net right now in this situation is Curtis Joseph. He is so cool. He's had very little work. Now he gets a power play facing him. He's got to be very, very sharp mentally. Here's Leach walking it in. Leach step by one. And a shot saved by Joseph. Rebound. Madano after it and Niedermeyer right on him. And then hit from behind was LaFontaine. Enough for Messier to clear it back down. So it is Richter tapping, Kevin Hatcher taking, 28 shots to 12, Canada. Team USA ahead, one to nothing. Kevin Hatcher drives it back in, 23 to go on the power play. It is behind Niedermeyer, jostled there with Madano. Back around now to Chelios, hands to Suter. Chelios again, rifled it to LaFontaine, but it went off his skates and is dumped to the glass. Rindemore nudged it further, and Niedermeyer carrying out. Short-handed Team Canada attacks. It's Iserman with it, but an offside call. Six seconds still left on the Team Canada kill. During the second intermission of game two, we wondered what happened to Team Canada because they came out in the third period and were brilliant. They didn't win the game, but they were the best team in that period. Mike Richter was the difference. We found out that Mark Messier, who didn't play in the game, went down into their locker room and had a speech for the team. He talked about what they were doing right, what they were doing wrong, to try to simplify the game. Harry's not happy with the offside call, but he was the person that seemed to push their team to become better in the third period, and he's looked to to be the emotional leader for Team Canada, and it seems as though in this one they play pretty well, but they trail 1-0. You know, their execution has been tremendous, unless you define it as getting as getting a goal. Here is Brindamore, Brindamore out in front, foot a shot, and hit the outside of the net. The teams are back at full strength. It is Iserman up with it. Iserman dropping it off now to Brendan Shanahan. Back to Iserman. Then Shanahan once more. Put it in front! And it went off Richter. Now played by foot. Comes around behind. Shanahan there. Out in front for Rod Brindamore. Brindamore fed it to the point. Foot there. Winds up and shoots! It's knocked into Richter and he's able to hang on. Oh, good work in front of the net. Taking away the Canadian forwards looking for the rebound. Richter there again. He's seen 29 shots. Stopped them all. This year, Poland, Russia, all across Europe, North America. What a great statement for hockey this game has been. My goodness. Foot, wait, fires off of Richter's stick. Played now through Kachuk, back to foot again. Foot with a wrist shot. It bounced loose to the slot. Chopped that by Dom Pus. Leach able to fling it away. And it's Bill Guerin turning. Uh, Canadians not giving the U.S. club any room. The loose puck battles going to Canada. Here is Gretzky again. Uh, Gretzky falling down. There's been quite a battle away from the puck. Darian Hatcher guides it ahead for Guerin. Then on to Mike Madano. Foot trying to take him out of the play. Madano goes down wanting to buy a penalty, but play continues. 2.38 to go second period. 1-0 USA. Here's Linden moving in. Fires a shot that went just wide. Now it's Doug Waite back the other way. Looking for Hall. Waite bringing it in. Picks up Leach for the pass. Leach crosses, but it had it knocked off his stick by Gretzky. Back up with it comes Linden. Hands on to Paul Coffey. Coffey tucked it over to Linden. And the pass stoked right back out to neutralize. Here's Hall trying to catch up to him. Shanahan. Brad Hall still trying to control, but it's knocked back along. In neutral ice, the battle continues. Canada's turn this time, but it's turned back over on a delayed offside. Deadmarsh will walk it back. Adam Deadmarsh bringing it in. Over to Doug Waite. Waite controlling, and a shot went off Joseph. And another shot, and Joseph got that one from Chelios' stick. And the clock is stopped. It's fast, it's scintillating, it's vicious, and it's entertaining. Two shots in a row by Team USA. About a minute and a half ago, that guy had him foot along with Keith Kachuk. Today, go at one another. Keith Kachuk ended up breaking his stick. The blade right off. I mean, it was vicious away from the, where the puck was. 
And they battle. Terry Gregson's got his hands full. He's talking to both linesmen now about this game. It's it's a it's mean. Here's Kachuk. There's foot bump from behind. Foot with a slash to the leg. Now watch this. Another shove. Look at Kachuk. Oh my goodness. You have to understand that there will be NHL discipline here for players if they use their sticks like that. There could be suspension starting the season. Now here, Terry Gregson is being talked to by both linesmen. This could be a big decision. Keith Kachuk, with that swing of a stick, breaking it off like he did, if the Lions would make a major call here, it could be a five-minute slashing penalty. And, and that would take yeah. Kachuk out of the game. Well, Terry Gregson looks like he may make a call. This is a very tough decision. The, the replay showed us that there was a swing with intent, broke the stick in half, and that could be a major penalty. Lindros got away with only a minor, and it should have been at least a double. Here, if Kachuk gets away with that one, well, I think Team USA going to be shorthanded for five minutes. I really do. This is Madonna and Foot. Foot got a stick up into the face of Madonna, and Foot got away with one there. Terry Gregson, as a referee, has got to get a handle on the stick work. There should have been a slash to foot, not call. And then this one here. I mean, you can't do that. that. That should be a major. That should be a major penalty. Players have been suspended for fouls when they weren't even called during the game, weren't even penalized. They can review that later. But later could be very soon right now. So Keith Kachuk, look at the man on the left. He's a power forward. He's a terrific player. But right now, he is worried. Big time worried. He is staring. He's not even blinking. He knows there could be a call here to go against him. This is a period in which Canada has outshot Team USA 20 to 9. The quality has been decisive for Canada, but they have not scored. There could be a long power play coming up to them now. Or maybe a five against two. The door is open on the penalty box side for Team USA, and I think Keith Kachuk is going to be skating over there. Now Terry Gregson's changed his mind. I mean, they know how important this is to make this call with the game as important as it is. Now, Messier working Terry Gregson. Chris Chelios is in there on behalf of his hockey club, and it's being explained to by the referee. Some very unsettling moments for Keith Kachuk right now. Eventually, the decision is going to be carried back to the bench. Neither team seems too pleased with anything right now, the, at least the people that are near Gregson. Nothing is up on the penalty board yet. Lord Brossaker is explaining something to Ron Wilson. A double minor to foot. I see that on the board. Foot. I see four minutes up on the board going to him, and Ron Wilson is really upset. Five and four. Five minutes to Kachuk. Four minutes to Foot. That's an interesting set of circumstances here. Well, it's for the stick work, and that also carries a game misconduct. To Keith Kachuk. So one of the guys Ron Wilson considered very important to Team USA's success tonight will be gone. Well, I personally, in watching the stick work, am glad that it's now being called because it was getting vicious. Now, with Keith turning around and taking a two-hand chop like that, he gets caught. Five minutes. That's an appropriate call. Foot got away with a stick play on the face of Madonna, but he also put the stick to the back of the leg of Keith Kachuk, so he was given a double minor for that. The referee's really trying to control this thing. Kachuk will be missed. He's played a power forward game, but you can't, there's the, that, that necessitated a double minor. Now watch this, it's a two-handed swing. He just can't do that. Thankfully, it was across the arm and not higher. So it's a toss of the game for Keith Kachuk. And I think the coaches, Ron Wilson now, knowing that this is such an important part of the game, having it explained to him by the referee, Terry Gregson. <laughs> Grace Gappinello arguing with Chelios, that's, that's undoubtedly uh, because that they have had some input in the decisions that were made, both Scapanello and also Gord Brossaker. You can read the lips of Scapanello telling Chelios it was vicious. You can read his lips, it was vicious. 
Kelly will say to Scampanello, a veteran linesman who I think probably made the call, but it shouldn't have been a major. Scampanello had to make the decision, and it is a major. Four minutes for slashing to foot, five minutes for slashing, and a game misconduct to Keith Kachuk. So. Team USA with a goalie and four. What a goalie. Team Canada with a goalie and four. And their goalie's been great, too. There will be a one-minute power play, but it won't come for a while. Desjardins. With a minute and 45 seconds to go in the second period. Team USA ahead 1-0 on a first-period power play goal that seems like a long time ago. Scored by Brett Hull. Suter. Kick to control failed. Otto given a bump. Staggers down. Puck underneath. And play stopped. And more. And more. Terry Gregson, as a referee, he should, in my mind, Mike, start handing out 10-minute misconducts here. You don't want to see players get tossed in a game of this magnitude. But he's got to get control of this thing. After every whistle now, we're seeing pushing, shoving. We're seeing sticks up. He's got to control it. If he gives two players 10 minutes apiece, it'll start being controlled. Amen to that. Joel Otto has gone to the penalty box. Scott Stevens departs. We have a minute 28 to go, so that could just be for minor penalties. And Gregson can't ask them to go rather than have them stay in the box and maybe get into something at the end of the period. A pretty good collision, shoulder on shoulder. Scotty Stevens put his shoulder into Joel Otto. That was a good clean hit. Yeah, both of them. Roughing minors apiece, so they'll be back, but they'll get a little earlier rest than their teammates. Terry Gregson's next assignment is the start of the NHL preseason on Monday in Kitchener. He's got Buffalo Hartford. That might be a tougher game. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's good. A lot of young players trying to make an impact, and they like to drop their gloves quickly in exhibition games. Don't be too sure. This one isn't over yet. <laughs> well, here's Odeline wedged by Messier, and then on to Fleury. Boy, we hope you're enjoying this. John and I sure are. Jim Fox is, too, and all of the traffic downstairs. Here's Fleury flipping one across, and it's spiked to the glass by Messier. 105 to go. In the second period, Amati shoves it back out. Got to 30-14, to 14, Team Canada. Lyle Odeline with it. Pass came across for Niedermeyer, then on to Messier. Messier crossing. Messier fed it, Flurry with it, Flurry out in front and the net dislodged as Flurry stashed it where it was. Oh boy, what a collision there. Darian Hatcher took the defenseman Lyle Odeline right into the goal net. I mean, he crushed him into the goal net and this will be a penalty to Hatcher. Team Canada crashing the net. Odeline's been up ice all game long. All game long and this time as the play was made at the net, Darian Hatcher took Odeline line and crashed him right into the net. Thankfully, the net came off the mooring, or it could have been a serious play. Brian Leach is the captain. He's appealing to the referee, but the referee now is trying to make the call that should have been called. You can't take a you can take a player into the net like this, but it's a penalty. So we have a serious situation here where Team Canada is making things happen. Team USA is taking penalties, and how they have not been scored upon yet, it, it's something. Now their penalty killers will be asked again to get it done. To the left side, you'll see Odeline there. I mean, he was shoved into the goal net hard. And that was off the mooring. Well, there needs to be a cool down time, doesn't it? Team Canada hopes to have cooled off Mike Richter in that time. It will be a goaltender in four against the goalie in three. We are 46.4 seconds before the official cool down time can begin. For Team Canada, Lindros takes the, the, the power play faceoffs in place of Gretzky, and he's very quick for a big man. Team USA is going with two defensemen and one forward. Scotty Young is the forward, and then the Chicago pair, Suter and Chelios back there. Lindros on the draw. Won it. Gretzky back to Coffey, to Joe Sackett, to Coffey. 
In front is Lindros. Sackick to Coffey. Sackick drives. Glove saved by Richter. Do you believe this guy? Spectacular. His, his focus is perfect. He's not panicking. He's under control completely. Good pass work by Team Canada. Lindros was in front trying to provide the screen. He was being pushed by Chris Chelios. Look at the pass. The shot. It may have gone wide. Who knows? But I know one thing. Richter was there. Look at Chelios work over Lindros. Look at, look at Richter move across. Head hardly moves. He's ready. Follows the puck right into the glove. Watching Richter practice, watching him take warm-up, he follows every puck with his eyes to his body, to the stick side, to the catching glove side. And there again, he followed the puck off the stick and sack it right into the big mid. They're ready for another trigger pull. Lindros will be in to do it opposite Pat LaFontaine. Lindros likes to go to the boards on the faceoff. They have Sackick over there. Now they put Gretzky over there. I think Lindros will try to pull the puck to the boards to Gretzky, who will then set up Coffey. LaFontaine would like to win it clean himself. It is Sackick, then Coffey. 30 seconds to go in the period. Gretzky on to Sackick. A shot fought off by Richter. Covered by Chelio. And play is stopped. 27.9 to go in the second period. I believe that last shot was deflected. And Richter still made the save. LaFontaine tried to push the puck right out of the zone on the face off, but Team Canada controlled it. And right to the net they went. Look at Richter move across, legs set, stick down, hands out. Yeah, he thought the shot was coming to his left, and it actually hit him on the right side. You can see by his body language and where his head was turned, but another smart save. His body position has been just perfect. This time, it's to the boards behind and Chelio. 22 to go. Team Canada will drop back. All coffee. The pass across to Lindros. Hustles on Gary Suter. Lindros tucked the pass across Gretzky there. Eight to go in the period. Coffey fires, knocked down. Turn around, Gretzky. to the new Dodge intermission report. Red Hall scored in the first period in 5.5 seconds remaining in the second. It was Eric Lindros of Canada. And after one period, it's tied one to one. And joining us right now, big power forward for Team Canada, Brendan Shanahan. Brendan, I've got to ask you about that second period. Certainly it seemed like just a matter of time before you guys beat Mike Richter. Well, yeah, we we were looking up at the score, the score clock and, uh, you know, shots on net. And, we just kept saying, put the puck to the net. There's sometimes, sometimes when you're not having luck around the net, you try and be too fine and too perfect. And we kept preaching on the bench and in the dressing room after the first period, just keep putting it at the net and don't try and be too perfect. There's talk about the experience on Team Canada. In game two, though, a lot of people felt maybe too much emotion. You get away from your game plan. Has that been the case tonight? Well, I think I think our game plan has has been pretty good tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, we felt it in that first game a little bit, but right now, uh, you know, we're doing a pretty good job of clogging up the neutral zone. The USA is playing a great game. We're playing 
a great game. The fans are being treated right now. So, uh, I mean, one period left. I mean, a month of hard work for mm -hmm. both teams. Both countries are tuned in. There's one period left, and uh, someone's going to win it. Brendan, I know you had an interesting comment before the tournament started. You said that Team Canada certainly performs better under pressure, and you said it's because you guys are terrified to lose. Oh, we're not allowed to lose here. Uh, you know, I, I imagine they're not allowed to lose over there right. either, but I can only speak for ourselves, and this is, you know, this is, our lacrosse is our national sport, but hockey is our beloved national sport. And I just think that uh, everybody in Canada is tuned in tonight. Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of pressure on all the guys, but if you're a hockey player, this is where you want to be tonight. Any hockey player who's ever laced them up, put on, you know, gone out in the ice or gone out in the street and played a bit of road hockey, if you're a hockey player, this is the place to be. You're in the midst of a game like this. I asked Brett Hall after the first period the same type of question. Do you get a chance to step back and appreciate how good this hockey is? Not really. That's, that's for tomorrow or tonight. Um, right now, You've got a job to do. You're focused. Um, I'd rather not be talking to you right now, but, right. but uh, <laughs> that's just, all right. You're a good guy, though. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've got a job to do, and like I said, um, one period left, so we're focusing on that. And uh, I'm sure it's entertaining hockey. You can tell the fans are into it. Uh, but uh, it'll be a day from now, a week from now, a month from now, when you appreciate uh, what kind of hockey's been played here in the last few weeks. Well, Brendan, we certainly understand the circumstances. Thanks very much for stopping by. Thank you. Brendan Shanahan has joined us after two periods of play. Team Canada has tied it up. It is now one-to-one. -one. And coming up next on the new Dodge Intermission Report, we'll look back once again, some of the more dramatic moments, World Cup 96. Are the scoring chances, 20 to six. And there will be power play time to Team Canada shortly after the third period gets underway. The quiet right now. The fire begins in just a couple of minutes. We'll be back. Olsen Center in the heart of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Game tied at one, third period about to start downstairs. Team Canada assistant coach Eddie Johnston has joined Jim Fox. Thanks very much, Mike, Eddie. I have to ask you about the game from the standpoint of not necessarily strategy. That second period, so much passion, so much hard work. Expect the same in the third? We expect the same thing in the third. Uh, you know, Richter's been outstanding, just uh, amazing some of the saves, but we got to continue to put the pressure on him. If we continue to do that, we'll be all right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Correct ourselves on the shots. 32 to 14. 32 for Team Canada and 14 for Team USA. All of this in the midst of a battle for the World Cup. The first World Cup, and man, has it been entertaining. There you see the World Cup symbol on top of the trophy that will be presented to the winner tonight. But in that second period, 22 to 9, the shots by Canada. Our first look at the trophy. You know, Mike, you talked about the shots. Team USA has had 14 shots total. Only eight by their forwards. Only eight. They have to find a way to be more responsible to their teammates and have a much stronger period if Team USA is to win this thing. For Team Canada, 22 shots, as you mentioned, in the second period. 19 by their forwards in that period alone. 19. Mike Richter, as we mentioned it a number of times now, has certainly been the difference, and he has given his team a chance to win this thing with a tie going into the third period. This reminds me of a game that was played in Montreal in 1976. It was New Year's Eve. It ended up being a 3-3 tie, no overtime. Tretiak of the Red Army team for the Soviet Union put on a goaltending spectacle here. Some say second to none. And he kept his team alive. They were badly, badly outshot. It ended up being a 3-3 tie. Many people say maybe the greatest game ever played in Montreal in the old forum. Well, right here we're seeing Mike Richter put on a show that is very similar. And he has given his chance, his team, Team USA, a chance to still be in it. 20 years ago, 1976 on New Year's Eve. A great recollection. Curtis Joseph at one end. Mike Richter at the other. Both teams a man short for 2.05. And then there will be a one-minute Team Canada power play. And they can score twice or three times in that minute and still maintain the power play because it's on the major and ejection to Keith Kachuk. But for the next two minutes, it's a goalie and four apiece barring further penalties. Pass on now to Scott Young and a two on two. Young with a shot and that sailed off the glass. Moving in is Chelio. Taken to the board by Sackick. Lindros tries to play it. Chopped back in by Suter. 
Lyle Odeline turning, handing on to Saki. Trying to finesse by Suter and does. On now to Eric Lindros. Pass too far. This is pat back ahead for the carry out by LaFontaine. Then on over to Chelio. Too far for LaFontaine. A shift change by Team USA. Lindros rolled it along. Snyder took over for Team USA's defense. The one minute power play to Canada will begin a minute 15 from now. Early stages, third period. If you've just joined us, Hall in the first period on the power play. Lindros with six seconds to go in the second period on the power play. That's been all of the scoring. But some tremendous goaltending by Mike Richter. Shots remain 32-14. None have been taken in this period. Flurry on now to Paul Coffey. Hands on to Mark Messier. Messier just controlling, looking over his options, decides on Desjardins. Pivoting away from weight, Desjardins. Flopped one that's picked up by Kevin Hatcher. Steers it ahead for Brett Hall, working on Coffey. Hall with a wrist shot, knocked down by Paul Coffey, who was injured and out for a while in the first period. In a half minute, the one-minute power play will begin. Coffey cranks a shot right into the pads of Mike Richter. Ryan Leach for Team USA, walks it right back ahead. Leach nearly stepped by Niedermeyer. Rolled back ahead. Amante couldn't get a big hit on Lindros by Darian Hatcher. It is Amante. In eight seconds, the power play begins for Canada, but this is Leach. Leach tried to deal for Amante. Now we'll hustle back on defense. A three-on-two developing power play has begun. It's Lindros with it. Fed one across, and it's cut off by Leach and steered back out. Dropped off by Smolinski. Amante tries to play it ahead, and here's a chance for Leach moving in. He's got Amante breaking. Save made by Joseph. And he covers. That was a short-handed shot by Tony Amante. As Joseph was probably his best save of the game. Team Canada on the power play. Had a foot, or one of the players had trouble with the puck at the Canadian blue line. Team USA took advantage of it with Ryan Leach, who's been brilliant here early in the third. Now, Lindros is on the puck here, but watch Ryan Leach read the play. There's the play defensively. That sets up offense. Now, a bit of a break right here as the puck went right over top of the stick of Adam Foote, and Leach jumped on the play. Curtis Joseph right there. Good quick shot by Tony Amonti. Real quick shot. But Curtis Joseph stayed deep, got from one side to the other in time, and made the save. Jack and Janice Leach from Cheshire, Connecticut are here watching their son play tonight. Otto in on the draw with Messier. A number of parents from Team Canada and Team USA are here. What proud moments it must be for them. Off this face off, it kicked on back to Saki. A little trouble, but 40 seconds to go on his team's major penalty power play. Taken away by Otto, on back for Shooter to drill it back in. Stopped behind by Joseph and set for Coffey. Over two and a half played in the third period of a one-all tie. Sackick sent it around the roulette wheel of the glass. Shanahan trying to play there. Fought off by Otto, but taken by Messier. Behind now for Fleury. Theo Fleury dumped it back off. It's chopped, but into Sackick, who keeps it. Sackick dealing it along once more to Fleury. On to the back to Paul Coffey. Coffey, finessed it over to Fleury. At the slot, a shot. Oh, and it ricocheted off the outside of the goal. Richter may have gotten a piece of it. Now it's back for Sackick. Then on for Flurry. Penalty time is up. Shot went wide. Otto steps to that one. Joel Otto back for Team USA. Canada in the midst of a chain. Bill Guerin trying to get by. Coffee saying no to him. To the corner of the puck loose. Deadmarsh there. Hammered by Shanahan. Up with it as Deadmarsh still battling. Got it on back for a quick shot that was wide by Matthew Snyder. Now taken by Madonna. And we get a stoppage of play. I think Garen and Coffey will be going to the penalty box for a two-minute rest. They really were going at one another. Let's take a look at the Team USA. One shot in this period, and Curtis Joseph moved across. Amonti wanted to shoot the puck quick, which he did. Went right into Curtis Joseph. He, too, controlled the rebound nicely. Shots 1-1 here in the third period. Teams at even strength, even though Garen and Coffey have now gone to the penalty box. We understand referee and chief Brian Lewis visited the officials room between periods, but he said only to inquire about the second period penalty assessment, not to give them any special instructions for the third. We also heard Pat LaFontaine sharpened his own skates between periods after he had done a television interview. It's an eventful 18 minutes for him. But this is Otto against Sackett. With their heads. 
It's helmet to helmet. Josh Stevens stepping behind. On to Desjardins. And back in. Lindros cruising for it. Had trouble controlling. Bumped into by the hip of Leach. And back off to the point. Desjardins has it there. Gets it back again from Sacky. Trouble at the blue line. Loose puck is spiked back along the boards by Darian Hatcher. It is Deadmarsh stepping ahead with Otto in a two on two. Deadmarsh to the slot. Now hands back over for Darian Hatcher. Sackick blocked it and took it. Joe Sackick accelerating for Team Canada. Darian Hatcher there. Sackick pulling. Drops the pass back over to Odeline. Odeline sent one to Lindros, and the shot hit the outside of the goal. Fed back over near Joel Otto. Otto steered it back ahead. Scott Stevens banged into Deadmark. Pivoting with it as Odeline lays it ahead for Eric Lindros. And his shot was deflected wide by Hall. Along the boards, they crash. Wait took his man, and back ahead, Team USA, and it's Hull racing in. Hull pivoting, fed it over to Darian Hatcher, tried to get it across, and it's thrown wide by Gary Suter, who moved all the way out. Things opening up a little bit. Wayne Gretzky bringing it on for Canada. Flopped one in front, steered away by Richter. Suter flung it behind, and it's along now for Wait. 15.05 to go, third period. Niedermeyer with the keep. Scott Niedermeyer back across to Oberlein. Then he missed on the pass for Linden. Rounded back to the point by Gretzky. Niedermeyer there across the old line again. Shoot one in front. And it ricocheted right back out. Played back out by Team USA. Brett Hall bringing it on. The only goal scorer for his team tonight in this one-all tie. Sees it broken down by Niedermeyer and steered back to Brindamore. With Linden breaking. It's Brindamore with a drive. And the riser got the glass. Now here's Amante drilling it all the way back down. And there will be icing down to the area outside Team Canada's locker room and Jim Fox. Thanks, guys. You can certainly feel the passion in the voice of Brendan Shanahan in the last intermission. The reason, this is part of it. We saw it in Vancouver, but the faxes, the notes, the letters, not only friends, not only businessmen, but you can see school, children, classes all around Canada, they're sending their best wishes to Team Canada. And the crowd is, too. The crowd tonight, 21,500 or thereabouts. Three seconds from now, both teams will get a man back. And here in the third period, Team Canada is putting pressure on, but they can't get shots. They haven't registered too much on Richter. They've been wide with their shots, Flurry and Brindamore in particular. Another important face-off. Generally, the team that seems to control face-offs generates, especially Canada, they get their face-off game going. They control the puck and make a lot of things happen. Flurry on the draw with Smolinski. And it is lobbed back out. Have you noticed any more involvement by the U.S. forwards here in the third? A little bit. They seem to be having, they seem to have better skating legs, Mike. They do have the one shot, but that was shorthanded. They need to generate it at even strength now. Canada's come out of their zone nice, and that's a great pass by Stevens. Here's Brindamore setting up Iserman. Iserman cruising right in, and his shot is kicked out by Richter. Dump back away from Smolinski, neutralized. It is pitchfork back in again by Eric Desjardins. And that's the thing. Canada's coming out of their own zone so easily, and it's pressure, pressure, pressure on Team USA. And their defense, you, you just wonder how much they have left in Team USA's defense. They've been pressured just, just a ton. Rod Brindamore goes to work on that defense. John LeClaire goes back in deep to play it. Rattle it around the boards, and it's taken by Lindros, fresh from the bench. 13.40 to go in the third period of this 1-1 tie. Both teams have scored on the power play. Darian Hatcher nudged it on. It's Amati trying to bring it further. Sackick working on him. Pitched around but away from Joseph. Centered in front. Paul Coffey corralled that one and started it back ahead. Shanahan looks ahead for Sackick. Handcuffed him with a pass. In deep it goes around for Richter. Richter back to his goal crease. Shanahan tried to center. Could not. Lindros then turning with Madonna in his way. Wrapped around for Sackick once more. Marion Hatcher and Sackick test the boards. It's back around for Detmarsh. He's got Amante breaking, hoping for him, but instead it's Coffee. Clock ticks down to 13 minutes to go in the third. Up controlled now by Detmarsh. Detmarsh walking it ahead. He's got Garen breaking the pass off the skate of foot. Long now for Detmarsh again. Detmarsh trying to get his way to the front, but it was spiked away. Good defensive play made by Adam Foot. Back to the point. And a shot by Chelio, smothered by Shanahan, and he put it through his legs back down the ice. So Team USA with pressure, but great defensive play. The block by Shanahan, and twice Adam Foot stopped the puck from getting to the front of Curtis Joseph.
early in the game about Canada and their baton handoff from Robert Esme, who ran in the 4x100 in the Olympics for Canada. Team USA had a pump-up tape, a tape they put together of all the good things that have happened in the tournament. Showed that to the players prior to the game. Mike Arruzzioni, who scored the big goal in the Miracle on Ice game and beating the Soviet Union, the game winner, he sent a telegram to Team USA. And I think you know the passion that's involved with both these clubs in trying to win this World Cup of Hockey. It used to be a rivalry between Canada and the Soviet Union or Russia, but now the rivalry, these two teams. And deservedly so. Again, Mike Arruzzioni's telegram read in part, I know what it feels like to be where you are. It's a special moment, so capture it. A lot of passion in this sport and a lot of passion here in Montreal. Winthrop, Massachusetts, captain of the 1980 Olympic team, Mike Arruzzioni. There's a slot, a shot by Hall is answered by Joseph, and Hall was sent down to the ice after he let it go. And it's popped into the seats and play is stopped. We mentioned offense from faceoffs. You win the faceoff, something good can happen. And boy, did Team USA win the draw, and did Brett Hall ever pay after he got the shot. Watch how quick it happens. Otto, Chelios, Hull shot, and a banger. Great save by Joseph. He's made two real strong saves here in the third period. Look at Bro uh, Brett Hall back up, take the shot, and then Messier, pardon me, Lemieux kicked his feet right out. Kicked his feet right out. Hull went down hard, but he did get the shot. The puck was rolling at the time with a shot. Curtis Joseph, that's a big save off of Brett Hall and a big save off of Amonti this period. Hull poised. Otto and Messier for the faceoff. Just like years ago, Calgary against Edmonton. Still, Brett Hall backed up, Mike. He saw Chelios with a puck. He backed up to find open space. He didn't drive to the net looking for a rebound. He got open. And you put the stick, the puck on his stick when he's open for a moment. Watch out. It is Chelios, but that ricocheted off Graves and back to neutral light. Brett Hall has had three 70-plus goal seasons in the NHL. 70-plus. Off of Lemieux, it is tapped on back. Squirted through, Otto couldn't reach. Niedermeyer can control. Up center ice, the big clock. So it's 12.05 to go in the third period. Richter out. Clicked it away to the glass. Malinsky tries to play. Bounces one to Amonti. Drop back for Smolinski. Ryan Smolinski rushing it ahead. Shoots one, and it went wide. Trapped by Joseph, and play is stopped. This line has been very quiet for Team USA. Smolinski, LeClaire, and Amonti. Amonti did a good job shorthanded, but at even strength, this line's been the best line for Team USA through the first two games. In this game, They've been quiet. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with Desjardins and Stevens, the defense pair for Canada, on the ice when Leclerc is out there. Leclerc is so big, so strong, so good in the offensive zone around the net, that Canada has made has paid special attention to them. And again, as Leclerc stays out there, so is Stevens and so is Desjardins, the defense pair to go against them. Malinsky on this draw with Linden. Monty working along with John Leclerc as the winger. It'll be Schneider and Kevin Hatcher, the point man. And it's won by Team USA. Amante back to Schneider. Matthew Schneider sailed it to the glass. Leclerc dug it out. Got it on over to Smolinski. A shot. Ricochet off two defensemen. Leclerc backhander. Saved and covered by Joseph. Mike, I've said this many times. When you're a goaltender and you see a person do a 360 to get a shot, especially on the backhand, you go down and wait for the low shot. It's hard to elevate the puck. Leclerc spun right around with the puck to get the shot, and Curtis Joseph was down waiting for it. That's a goaltender reading a play, thinking where the puck is going to go. Here's Leclerc. Watch him spin around and get the shot. See Curtis Joseph down there waiting? That's a smart read by the goalie. And this is the best for, oh, I don't know, since a portion of the first period, the best that the U.S. forwards have looked. They're taking some responsibility here. They're forechecking, and they're working Canada deep. And finally, Curtis Joseph having to be good. Three shots to two, Team USA in this period, and eight minutes and 22 seconds have been played. Gary Gregson talking to the Team Canada coaching staff, and this probably has to do with line changes. Team USA is the home team here. They got the home team advantage in this final game because of the higher seed, so they get the last change. Lindros and Smolinski on the faceoff. Ray Scapanello to drop it. Lindros the clean win to Eric Desjardins. Wraps it around for Brendan Shanahan. Good bump off by LeClaire. There in Hatcher. Saw that one go off Lindros. Eric Lindros got it on for Shanahan. 
play broken down and put off Scott Stevens. Amante hustling ahead. Tony Amante pivoting. He's got a man breaking. Darian Hatcher tried to throw it in front. Shanahan all over him. Shanahan flipped it. Darian Hatcher up with it. Wristed one that's fought off in front by Desjardins. Trying to pull away from Smolinski. He's lost his stick. Smolinski nudged it on. They try to play in deeper but can't. Now it's back across. Amante a shot is grabbed, dropped, and covered. And then put back into play by Joseph. Team USA making a change in lines. It's drilled all the way back down by Lindros, and there'll be an icing touchdown. By Leach with 10.49 left in the third. So Canada with two shots here in the third period. Team USA with three. And the last one by Tony Amonti. So he's had two here in the third period of their three, the other by Brett Hull. Tony Amonti can play the off wing pretty well. He took a good shot there. I remember there he is moving in to get the shot. He likes to shoot high. There you can see he hit the net, certainly, or would have hit the net. Joseph the save. Tony Amonti, remember Scotty Bowman, great coach. Now Detroit telling me that this kid Tony Amonti belongs to the Rangers. It reminds me of Yvonne Cornwallier. Can he scoot? Can he play? Tony now plays in Chicago with the Blackhawks, and he's carved out a pretty good NHL career. Road run. What a comparison. It is Suter pursued by Flurry. Barry Suter wrapped it around, waiting for it as Iserman, but then right on him was LaFontaine. LaFontaine battling to his side. Iserman got a little tap to Brindamore. Out in front, it's cut off by Chelios and dumped back out. Off Bill Guerin's stick. It would have been an onside play. Joseph covered. And that would have been a three on two if Team USA could have controlled the breakout. So a lot less pressure by Team Canada here through the first half of this period. 10-16 to go in the third. And a lot more effort by Team USA's forwards. We see a big, big difference. Team USA's defense, this is like a walk in the park now compared to the first two periods regarding pressure that they had on it. Remember though, Keith Kachuk was tossed from the game with the splashing major, and that has hurt their line combinations and it took a power forward away from their hockey club. Otto has Young and Hall with him. Kevin Hatcher working in back with Schneider. Face off is thrown around by Niedermeyer. Striding to it is Lyle Odeline. Odeline popped it ahead for Lemieux. Got it ahead to Messier. Messier crossing, looking, dealt one in front, and down to the ice. At the front of the net went a Team Canada player. It was Grave. The battle continues on the board. Niedermeyer trying to play it. Now it's nudged ahead for Hull moving in. Hull crossing, looking for a pass. Fed one too far for Scott Young, but he retrieved. Young carried off by Odeline. The battle continues on the wall. Mark Messier stepping by. Good shoulder into him by Smolinski. Odeline tries the other way and waiting for it is Claude Lemieux. Turned it back out. The clock shows nine and a half to go in the third period of this one-to-one -one tie. It skips over to Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer behind. 34 shots for his team. 18 for Team USA. Two shots for Canada in this period. And for USA, four. Monty lifts it right back in again. Well, see what happens when you can't break out of your zone as quickly? That means Canada can't get their flow going, can't get over center ice, can't get the puck deep, and can't punish Team USA in the USA zone. What you're seeing here now is Team USA a lot smarter with Canada's breakout. Brian Leach just stood up a minute ago and threw a body check right here into in Vincent Domfus. Earlier in the game, USA was backing up and Domfus would waltz out of the zone and set up offense. So it's a whole different style of play that we're seeing here now at the midpoint of the third period. Boy, did they ever adjust during those 18 minutes. Malinsky on the draw with Trevor Linden. And he won it to Steven. Then Gretzky. Darian Hatcher shanked it off Linden, but he was taken out by LeClaire. Much better coverage by the forwards for Team USA defensively. Here is Steven, then on for Gretzky. Tried to kick the control, but failed. Darian Hatcher flipped it along to LeClaire, stood up by Linden, and so it's Leach again, with 8.45 to go in the third period. All in the first period on a power play. Lindros late in the second on a power play. 1-1 one, one tie. Moving in is LeClaire. LeClaire with a feet across. A tip by LeClaire. This have been offside. Look at the top of your screen. That's Smolinski, the puck. Oh, baby, that was close. But watch Scott Stevens pick up LeClaire 
and harassed Leclerc on the tap in and Joseph actually had the puck come into Joseph there was a big side of the net open the USA has played much better here in the third period and it's giving their their team a chance to put some rush and some play on Curtis Joseph it is Shanahan bringing it back out for Canada Shanahan tried for Sackick but that failed Chelios behind Closing off Sackick and playing it back up the board. Bill Guerin's outlet pass too far. Shanahan drove it back in. Chelios and Suter turn in tandem the defense for Team USA. And it's Chelios handling. Suter, Guerin. And the tap ahead could not reach Deadmark. Good play defensively by Desjardins. Jumps back along for the turning Bill Guerin. Guerin's pass ricocheted ahead. We're out by Suter, but then lost. Help had to come from Madano. Here we go, Canada. The crowd chants. 7.45 to go in the third of this tie game. Flurry bringing it on. Flurry tries to work it through, but Suter says no. The last shift, Sackick looked exhausted for Team Canada. But here's Canada with that spark plug line. And they need a spark because they're getting outplayed here in the third period by Team USA. Spark plug line of Flurry, Brindamore, and Eisen. Pivoting with this now is Coffey. Lays a pass ahead. Rod Brindamore bringing it on. Drops it off to Flurry. Neil Flurry watched by Hull. Flipped one that rolled up the outside of the net. Hull shanked it off the board, but it's put with a shot. He scores! Sometimes you can honestly hear the puck go by when it grazes the side of your head. Yeah. You can't see it at times, but you can just feel it. You can see it, or you can just sense that it's going by. You can hear it. And Richter did not expect a high shot. It was a wrist shot. He didn't see it, obviously. And it's 2-1 Canada with 6.17 to go in the third period. It'll be Smolinski with Amante and LeClaire. And the defense, Darian Hatcher and Lee. 
Stevens working on defense with Desjardins. Mark Messier's line will be out for Canada with Graves and Lemieux. One by Canada, taken by Desjardins. Messier and out. Stoppage of play. And here you're seeing Lemieux on the ice, and he's not opposite Brett Hull. They put him on the ice for the Smolinski Leclerc Amonti line. But you still have that matchup of Scott Stevens and Desjardins on the ice for them. Now Team USA makes a forward change. And they go with Garen along with Deadmarsh. Deadmarsh getting more ice time because of Keith the Truck getting tossed out. Deadmarsh has a lot of speed. And this continues to go. I wonder if Scott Stevens and Desjardins will jump off as soon as possible to be ready the next time Leclerc and his line mates come on the ice. Bill Guerin hooked it away. Desjardins put it back out. Looks like they're going to stay for now anyway, John. Bouncer in on Joseph, and he'll just grab and hang on. Faceoffs now become a very important part of this game. 5.59 to go. Another faceoff in Team Canada's zone. They've relied a lot on Messier and draws. We have the draws, the face-off to this point at 25-25, dead even. But now the real ones begin. They leave Sackick on the ice, does Team Canada, to go opposite Madonna. 5.59 to go in the third. Huh. Is that something? Adam Foot named the Team Canada because Ray Bork declined to play, and he's got the go-ahead goal. 35 shots to 19 in the game for Canada. It is Suter shooting one, and it ricocheted off the outside of the goal after striking Shanahan. Suter pinching in his hit. Shanahan cleared it back down. It will be icing as Chelios is back for the touch. 546 to go in the third. And will Canada make a change? Sackick was defeated on the draw. Team USA threw the puck at the goal, looking for some offense. You wonder if Lem Sather will stay with Sackett or will he go with Messier? Here comes Messier now off the bench. Now you have to play percentages here. Of course, Team USA made a change up front too, Mike. They have Hull on the ice. So here we go. Desjardins, Stevens, Lemieux, Messier, Graves, primarily because Brett Hull's out there. And another interesting change. Doug Waite not on the ice with Hull and Young. It's LaFontaine. The Team USA is going with, so they're mixing their lines up. One false start and a couple. It's won by Team USA. Leach jammed it, but into traffic. It kicked back away from him, and Lemieux is able to turn and get it as far as Team USA's end. Richter hooked it around for Leach. Leach spun it on the wall. Hall waiting there. Couldn't take. Messier could. Flopped it back in. Under five and a half to play, third period. Pass in traffic, but it's controlled. Scott Young goes wide. Kick back over to Desjardins. Desjardins rolled it back further. Steam back across for Young. Directed a pass ahead over two lines for LaFontaine. And again, the clock stopped with 5.15 left. You wonder, Team USA putting LaFontaine at center ice in place of Doug Waite, maybe to add some speed, experience. Doug Waite, a fine playmaker. Uh, here you see Madonna looking up, 5.15 to go. He's not had a shot registered on goal for approximately two minutes. As we have face-off after face-off, and again, in puck possession after face-off, to make things happen. This time it's to Canada. Foot laid it back in. Elio's over to get it. Elio's and Gretzky on the board. Kicked it over to Smolinski. Smolinski, little trouble with that one. Jammed along further by Linden, but controlled by Team USA, though the pass misfired. Whole new set of players on the ice for Team Canada to play against Leclerc. Whole new set, five different players. Luter to Chelios, the tap back across. Amante put it back in, and it's Joseph setting for Coffin. For Linden, but it went off the referee, bounced over to Linden. Chelios for Team USA, flopped it wide. Iserman taking it. Iserman and Brindamore and Fleury are out there. And again, Team Canada will be guilty of icing. And the stoppage shows 4.26 to go. Period three. Foot unassisted at 12.50. The margin for Canada. On the right side, Cammy Granato, one of the, the great hockey players in the United States. Tony Granato had a great career, and he'll now continue with San Jose. 
in the National Hockey League. A little apprehension on her face. Downers Grove, Illinois. She was named the U.S. Women's Hockey Player of the Year. He looks on as Suter goes back to get this with 4.20 to go in the third. Team USA needs one to get back even. Lyle Odeline drove it back in. Richter stopped it behind. Chelios hangs on to it there. Deadmark bringing it on. Adam Deadmark walking it in, trying to get by Odeline. It's punched loose into Odeline by Madano. Off the linesman skates. Once again, it's Suter. Gary Suter's pass was off Garrett. Spun right back to Suter again. Tries for Chelios off his stick. Rushed back on, and here's an opening for Claude Lemieux. He's got Graves with him. Lemieux is in, and he fanned on the shot. Richter hanging on to it and plays stop. Good communication there. Richter and Leach. Leach took the player Adam Graves out of the play, so it then became a one-on-one -on -one play. Lemieux and Richter. Claude Lemieux on his shot, as you called it, Mike, did not get it clean. It seemed to jump on him, and Richter was there. It's a two-on-one as far as the skaters go. So Leach goes right over to the open man, takes him out, and it then becomes a one-on-one, -on -one, Lemieux and Richter, and Richter kept the puck out of the goal. Watch the puck. Does it jump up? No, it just went off the heel. Lemieux did not look down. He had his head up the whole time. He didn't sense the puck sliding off the heel of the blade of the stick. The expectations of a nation on Canada. Is it a positive or a negative? It's been debated all during this tournament whenever Canada has been threatened. But Canada right now has a one goal lead. Mark Messier to draw with LaFontaine offensively for Canada. It is back to Steven. And around the board, Brett Hall. Initially unmolested and lifted further, but it's back to Desjardins, but then picked up by Kevin Hatcher. Pass across for Young. Tried to punch it by Stevens. Help came from Lemieux. Lemieux fired. Waiting for it is Lee. Shoots one to play. It's score! The game is tied with 3.18 to go. Brian Lee let a shot go. The direction on it was King. And into the net it went. Team Canada is interested in seeing whether this was off a high stick. Mike, Fred Hall made the play along the boards but not touching the puck. He could have stopped the puck, but he let it go right to Brian Leach. Now the shot was deflected. It's the crossbar that is the measuring stick. If it's above the crossbar, when it was deflected by Hull, it would be no goal. Below the crossbar, it's a goal. But a great play as the puck was fired around here by Hull to let it go. He then went to the front of the net and deflected the shot. Watch him over here. He let it go. Now he's skating in front. There's the shot. Oh, baby, that is close. It was knocked down with the bottom side of the blade of Red Hull stick. Now, for us to see a camera angle from above like that, we, we can't tell. Upstairs in the replay booth, the decision will be made. Oh. They will communicate the decision to Terry Gregson, and there will be ultimate quiet or a thundering roar once it's announced. That was Claude Lemieux, who came all the way back in his own zone to help his teammates out. He fired the puck around. Leach had the shot go high because it was rolling. The puck was deflected down past Curtis Joseph. He was standing upright, upright, thinking it's a high shot to try and make the save. And Brett Hall, how he does it, I don't know, but he did it again. There's Cujo. He lifts up. The puck goes down and through. He was off his feet. Down and through. We're tied at two if it's allowed. They are continuing to view it. They have a number of angles with which to make a decision. Terry Gregson waits patiently on the word from up top. Whatever they say will go. The one thing is, for them to make a decision, it has to be conclusive that it's a high stick. If it's not conclusive, it's a goal. Now that looks about armpit high on, on Brent Hull. Is that above the crossbar? I don't know. That's a tough call from the views that we have seen, and it's a tough decision to be made upstairs. They have to be absolutely right and know that it's a high stick to disallow it. It used to be shoulder height. Now it's crossbar height. Well, the man is 5 feet 10 inches tall. The crossbar is 4 feet it's above the ice. It's a goal, Mike. 2-2. Two, two. It's on the board. With 3.18 to go, and why are we not surprised? 
Man, you know what it's like now? It's like overtime right now. 3.18 to go, and we're tied up at two. It's late in the third. Folks, it's like overtime right now. Leach gloves it, bouncing puck, chopped along further. Amonte dropped it. Leclerc connects. Back up now is Smolinski, who moves in. Got it to Darian Hatcher in a shot, and getting a piece of it was Joseph. Now Smolinski again to Amonte, a shot that saves Joseph. Oh, my. Around behind centering pass, thrown away to the corner by Coffey. It is Amonte getting it back to the point. Leach a shot that's blocked. Leach pitched it again to the corner. Smolinski able to pull away, tried to center, but it went off a foot. 2.40 to go. Game tied at two. Hatcher with it. Shoots one. Save rebound. Score! Amandi has broken the tie! You know, you wonder about emotions, but it was 2-2. This building was silent. I mean silent. Team USA had their big line on the ice. They just four-checked and they shot. Curtis Joseph with two or three saves, and Amonte will get credit for the goal. Terry Gregson checking to see if it was kicked in or directed by the leg. That will be checked upstairs. They've already been on the phone with him. Terry Gregson put his right hand up in the air now and he has to sit and wait. Now, he was emphatic. He said goal. He said goal to all the players of Team Canada who were questioning the call. Now, did that hit a skate and the stick? It looked like it definitely hit the right skate of Tony Amonti, but he may have got it with the blade of his stick after that. Let's watch it again. Tony Amonti did the work. Now he goes to the net. Off his skate and then possibly the stick. Terry Gregson was in the left corner. He was looking right at the play and he was emphatic that it was a goal. Now it's being questioned and if it was directed in by the skate without the stick, it will not be allowed. This year, the new rule, goals are allowed off a skate unless the goal is scored due to a distinct kicking motion. This World Cup is under the new 96-97 season rules. Distinct kicking motion. That's what they are trying to determine from this footage. Why? <laughs> uh, there's now silence here again. I mean, big time silence. 2.35 to go in the third. There's the reaction from Brett Hull and teammates. Brett Hull scored the goal to make it 2-2, and his teammates kept going. Their forwards have had a much better third period. And now another very important decision upstairs. That's a goal. Team USA is ahead 3-2. With 2.35 to go in the third, Tony Amonti gets credit for it. Oh, my. I'm looking down at Mike Richter. He's looking down at the ice in front of him. Now he stands up. He knows Team Canada has had 36 shots. They need at least one more. Mike Richter needs to possibly make more saves. 2.35 to go. Oh, baby. So some grim faces at Team Canada's bench. Two goals by Team USA. Both of them reviewed. Both of them found to count. Team Canada's only had four shots on goal here in the third period. Off the glove of Darian Hatcher. Richter spun it around. Trouble for Leach, but he recovered. Fired it back off. Scott Stevens pitched one that's gloved down by Darian Hatcher. Then on to Young. Scott Young banked it back in. Otto trying to pull his way through, but can't. It's Desjardins with 2.12 to go in the third period. Team USA 3. Team Canada 2. Eric Lindros firing it back around the board. His team making a change, so Amonti has time here to move the puck. He flies it back to the glove of Stevens. Scott Stevens, the defenseman, played it through Brindamore, thrown back in by Amonti, and Joseph got that one. Joseph sets now for Stevens. Four checker is Leclerc. One minute and 45 seconds to go in the third period. Iserman bringing it on, lobs it ahead. Flurry tried for that one, Amati brushed it away. Mike, these fans are stunned here. They're not showing support for Canada whatsoever. They're stunned and they're quiet. Elios lobs, Coffee forced it around. Good point, John, it's definitely quiet. Oh man, isn't that something? Now they start to talk it up a little. Here comes Iserman with a minute 20 to go. Joseph is in his goal still, he's at the hash mark. It's turned along now for a centering pass. It's sent away by Suter. Puck kept back to the point. It's Coffey shooting one that kicked back out. It's thrown back down by Young. Joseph was wise not to go off. Shot blocked by Detmarsh, who's had a very strong third period for Team USA. 
Lurie moving it back in. Joseph headed to the bench. The net is empty at the other end. It's banked back off the boards and back down. It will be icing as Coffee touches. It was Lindros who left the Team Canada bench as Curtis Joseph got there. Timeouts, both available, one per club. They can set up what they need to set up for these face-offs. 53 seconds on the nose to go here in the third period. Team fans, I'm sorry, That's right, go right ahead. I say the fans now start to respond to try and help their club with a face-off to the right side of Mike Rickson. Team USA spent a timeout earlier. Canada is, well, maybe they're using theirs now. It looks as though they are. So this is the last breather for either of the two teams and for us. You're right, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that Ron Wilson had used his timeout in the second period. Can't understand that nothing much has happened, John. 36-23, <laughs> the total shots on goal. And Team Canada's offense not nearly as powerful as what it was through the first two periods when Mike Richter was flat out spectacular. He may still have to be, but for Team USA, it's just an amazing late third period turnaround here. And now it's up to the centerman. I'm sure Joel Otto will take the draw for Team USA. He's taking all the big ones through the tournament. Mark Messier is on the ice. And Mike, I, I don't know how many times it's been. It's got to be in the hundreds that these two players, Otto and Messier, have faced each other for a draw. Now, no, they go with Lindros as opposed to Otto. The net empty. Six attackers against the goalie and five. Canada needs one. 53 seconds to go. Lord Brossaker warning Lindros. And Mark Messier will replace him. One by Messier, back to Coffey. Paul Coffey, shove him one side of the net, and shanked off Gretzky's stick. Now a backhander by Dumfries has sailed all the way back down the ice, and in! Oh, man. Wayne Gretzky had a chance to tie it up. The puck glanced right off the blade of his stick, through his legs, and wide. Messier had won the draw, and then from one end of the ice to the other, the puck slowly had steam to go across the goal line. And with 41.2 to go, Team USA is a 4-2 lead. What an emotional change there has been here in this third period. Amazing. It was so decisively against Team USA at the end of two. 32 shots to 14. Look at Gretzky on the right side in the open net. And the pass that moved across either jumped over his blade or was too hard. I believe it was from Coffey after Messier won the draw. And then the empty net goal. Team Canada looks now at a two-goal deficit. And they're in trouble, obviously. Leclerc lobbing it back in. Coffee to take it. Joseph back in the goal. They'll try to get him out again. Iserman wanting to control. Then Brindamore down to the last 27. Angled back off again. Joseph heads for the goal. Iserman drops it. And then Niedermeyer. Joseph is back in net. It's Detmarsh. Big drive. He scores! has drilled one into the net and Team USA has a 5-2 lead with 17 and a half to go and they're going to win this World Cup. Mike Denmarsh with a great third period. Actually, he's played pretty well in the game. He got a lot more ice time when Keith Kachuk was tossed from the game for the slash, but Mike Richter, to me, should be the MVP for Team USA and, and the MVP in the tournament. But what he did in period three of game two and then what he did through the first two periods of this game, flat out amazing. He gave his team a chance to win. His team took that opportunity. And in the third period, they were the better team. Even though Foot had given Team Canada the lead, Team USA was the better team in the third period of this pivotal game. First places like Corpus Christi and Toledo and Elk River, Minnesota and Melrose, Mass and Madison and Detroit and St. Albans, Vermont, all brought in from rival teams in mid-August and taking off for those old destinations tomorrow. But what a magnificent 32 days together. Brindamore on over to Iserman in the last six seconds. This is no miracle. It is a reward for building excellence, and Mike Richter should be the guy that will sit atop all of it. The final score, Team USA 5, Canada 2. Team USA has won the World Cup.
And Verlou Lamorello, Jack Ferrara, Ron Wilson, Paul Holmgren, Keith Elaine. Congratulations. John Cunham. They did a terrific job. This team came together early. They faced a tough situation here in Montreal, great hockey city in Canada. They faced a great team in Team Canada. Mike Richter got the job done early, and then his teammates got the job done in the third period, and they deserve this championship. Mike, I can't help but look forward immediately to the 98 Olympics in Japan. It'll be something, and this team could and should be the favorite. The handshakes being exchanged by these two rivals from North America. And the fans responding with polite applause. They're wearing different jerseys, but some of these guys will be teammates effective tomorrow. Now let's just listen and watch the pictures. deal will be said and written over the next few days here north of the 49th parallel about this tournament. Good deal probably be written and said south. But what an excited bunch of guys. John LeClaire one of the heroes of this entire tournament but without Mike Richter they would not be staying out there with smiles to get a presentation. And it was their line that got the game winning goal. The goal by Tony Amonti. They outshot Team Canada 11-5 in the third period and their, their forwards came alive. The forwards weren't there in the second period, but they came alive. Mike Richter, brilliant. There's a lot of people that have followed Mike Richter closely, understand that he's a great goalie. In fact, I know that Chris Chelios, or pardon me, Matthew Schneider, plays in Toronto now, said that Mike Richter.